The nation, no, the world. That's right. Here All we are. The world, baby. People are following us, hanging on every word. Ready to... No, I won't say it. I was going to say ready to... No, ready no, to... no, no. We are ready to go to war, baby. Ready, ready to, to have spread it love and peace in a beautiful, hopeful way. That's yeah. right. We are underground in Vault 77. We're in a, the we're Hunger in a, Games have begun. We're in a FEMA facility. We're trapped right now, ladies and gentlemen. It might look like our regular. It might look like our regular setup, but the government is forcing us to do this fucking branded. <laughs> Brandon's forcing us to stream and and say all the things mean things about Republicans. <laughs> we love Republicans. Let us out. Yeah. <clears throat> in truth, it, I'm actually more black pilled. I think even today than I was uh, following. Did you start watching the show I told you to watch. No, not yet. Dude, you're no. going to be so pissed when you start watching that show. Hassan was telling me to watch the show on HBO. We own the city. We own the city. And it's like, I love that shit. Because you said it's about like corrupted police department in it's New It's a Jersey. real story Baltimore. about the horrific criminal actions that and the rampant abuse that the Baltimore Police Department uh, both covered up, engaged in, turned the other cheek, supported, encouraged. Yeah. Uh, specifically uh, on the gun, uh, the gun trace task force. Mm. Uh, it's a part of like the violent crimes investigative division. Mm. You know, they have vice, they have, you know, the gun, you know, those are the gun guys. Uh, and it, it's awesome. It's real stories. Like every single part of that show from start to finish seems fictionalized. Cause you're like, there's no way this is real. But like every single thing that happened, happened in real life. Yeah, I, I love that. I know about the Baltimore Police Department because The Wire is one of my favorite shows. I know how fucked up. Oh, and David it. Simon yeah. also yeah. wrote it. So I mean, or, or co-produced. The same guy who made The Wire? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Let's I go right now. Say, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to watch that. But the reason I'm blackpilled this morning is because the Supreme Court is basically come down with two rulings today. One That's right, baby. is that they made the Miranda right. You never, no longer have to read the Miranda right when you arrest someone, which is, you guys know it, it's, you have the rights to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used to you, against you in a court of law, that whole thing. Yeah, they don't have to say that anymore. Yeah, you can like, incriminate nah. yourself. Uh, fuck the Fifth Amendment. You can, you can totally incriminate yourself. I think the, the less rights for people, more more rights for police is the way we need to be moving. And guns. Guns, police, and citizens can be fucked. Yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. And and also fetuses. <clears throat> fetuses are everything. Yeah. By the way, it's kind of funny because also jewels got banned this week. Yeah. Fucked up. So, so they say. Unacceptable. So they say on one hand, nobody can have jewels because it's too dangerous. Yet everybody can have a gun anywhere at any time. Yeah. Does that seem uh, logically consistent to you? Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. There's a, there's a real there's a real pandemic of of gunlessness happening in this country, and I'm glad that the Supreme Court is addressing it. PVP unlocked in New York. That's right. It's New York is That's now right. the towers. It's, we got PVP yeah. zone. Everyone can mm -hmm. have a gun. Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the sick. the other one that Hassan's touching on here is that you know New York has a really strict gun laws. Uh, and uh, they have this one clause that says you have to prove that you have a very good reason to get a, a concealed handgun permit. Yeah. And the the Supreme Court said, hell no, bro. We want it to be the Wild West around here. Well, Fuck states' here. rights. Fuck states' rights, unless it's abortion. Then yeah. we think every state should decide, yeah. which and is coming next You week. should be able to, like in Louisiana legally uh, uh, try to criminalize sending abortion pills into the state. Right. And also, which, <laughs> good luck. I mean, fuck you, Louisiana. Uh, but also, we will, if you, if you are caught administering abortion pills to someone, not the patient herself, but anyone else, like, caught, what do you do? You like, just swallow anyone it. else, like, helping facilitate an abortion gets five years hard labor. Hard labor? What yeah, is this, North Korea? Up. Dude, dude. What does hard labor mean? That's Louisiana, baby. At what, Angola. What, what age is this? Yeah, the Louisiana State Penitentiary is a, a robust business of that that runs on slavery. Straight up, like it's a it's a literal plantation. Hard labor. 
Oh, look that's up fucking any, awesome. Look up any photos, any documentaries about uh, Angola or uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary, and you'll realize, like, second degree uh, manslaughter charges uh, is, is life. Uh, life in prison so many young like 19 year old uh 18 year old black men just in prison doing hard slave labor. labor out in the sun yeah straight up like doing i mean they're i don't think they they pick cotton uh i don't know if they pick cotton specifically but they do everything <coughs> like literally everything car mechanics just uh you know they are doing agricultural work everything oh boy there was that famous sheriff in Louisiana that once said, uh, you know, we can't be letting these, uh, these, these, you know, good behavior, uh, misdemeanor having uh, black people out because they make good slaves, basically. When did he say that? <laughs> you might be thinking like, you know, 1910. No, uh, uh, like 2016. <laughs> Can you someone find that? Quote? Yeah, look up like Louisiana sheriff uh, slave labor. We can't be having no black people run around here, boy. No, he, he that's good labor. Yeah, he, he basically said if we let out people on good behavior, we lose workers. <sighs> that's normal. Yeah, here it is. Oh, 2017, 27. Oh, even more recent. Yeah, even more recent. So let's yeah. get a look at this modern take by Louisiana. <clears throat> we can't be having none of them black folks running around here, boy. Those crops ain't going to be picking themselves. Yep. <clears throat> and people be like, racism's dead. Yeah. There's no such thing as racism. Did someone find that quote? Well, I mean, I can read it to you. I already have it, and I can pull it as well if you yeah, want. Yeah, just read it. That's fine. Here, yeah, I'll pull just, it up. I'll just pull it. I'll just pull it right here. <coughs> I don't know if you Oh, can... it's on video? Let's go. Yeah. Can you listen to it here or no? Can you pull it up, Dan, or, or Zach, or whoever? If you can't pull it up here, just uh, I'll just read it. Now, let's watch the video. Okay. Is his screen not working? What's going on? Do you want me to put it into the Discord? I can pull it up. What uh, is his is his thing not working, Dan? It is working. I was at my computer. It's all good. But uh, he, can he not play audio from his? It's all good. It's all good. Um, I'll just read a quote. It's Wait, I got it right here. I'll play the video. All right, play the video. I'd rather watch this dumb fuck well, the Paris here. Jails. In Louisiana, the state, in order to save money, rather than holding prisoners, uh, way hundred years ago, the, the parish, that's not taxable, but a lot of years ago, the parish sheriff started holding prisoners, and they were willing to take a lesser amount than the state was charged for, uh, was having to pay. Uh, we have, since I've been the sheriff of Cattle Parish, we're not, I don't run a place out there, I don't want uh, state prisoners. Okay, they are a necessary evil to keep the doors open that we keep a few or keep some out there. And that's the ones that you can work. That's the ones that can pick up trash, the work release programs. But guess what? Those are the ones that they're releasing. In addition to the, in addition to the bad ones, and I call these bad, in addition to them, they're releasing some good ones that we use every day to, to wash cars, to change oil in our cars, to cook in the kitchens, to do all that where we save money. Well, they're gonna let them out. The ones that we use in our work release program, they're gonna let them out. And they're saying you can take a little worse criminal because we're gonna, we're gonna loosen up the standards that you can use them. And so you, instead of somebody with four years left in his sentence working, at a factory somewhere. Now they're gonna say, we're gonna let you use somebody with five years. Well, I'm not doing that. I no. Mean, at some point, a person, it's more beneficial for them to run off. And so there's so many aspects of this. There was one law enforcement person on this whole committee. I wish I'd been on there. Uh, Why weren't you? Well, I don't know, but uh, I would have probably spoken what I was thinking and, and uh, but anyway, and like I say, I'm not being critical of the entire effort. I'm not being critical on this the guy's going to hell and all those people behind him, too. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, straight up. He says it like I don't want people to come out and be released on good behavior because <laughs> they are slaves. They save us money. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's not I don't think that's the point of prison. I think or maybe it is. Maybe that is here, but 
I thought prison was supposed to rehabilitate people and send them back to be yeah. If you're a pussy, to, to be productive members of society, but yeah. not, but here it's actually just for slave labor. Yeah, the work release programs <clears throat> that he's talking about, by the way, work for the oil and gas industry as well. Like they do pick, um, they do pick. Uh, I don't know. I guess they do pick cotton as well. They they're just. They have work release programs uh, for for uh, prisoners that they let out on good behavior, or not let out on good behavior, but prisoners with, like convicted of a misdemeanor mm -hmm. that that still for some reason are just in prison for an extremely long time. Um, can do work release programs where they get paid like again like two cents an hour. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then the state takes and maintains the profits of their labor. That's disgusting. This is so fucked up, dude. This guy, bro, he's like, are you law enforcement or like a business person? Well, I mean, Ethan, I, you're 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 supposed to be fucking uh, doing the law, not thinking about capital well, and shit like that. You'd be shocked, dumb. maybe, to find out that Fuck. the uh, origins of police literally started as this. They were, uh, you know, asset extractors. They basically would they 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 were slave patrol. That was the original inception of policing in the south before we had like sheriffs and whatever we before we had a system like that the entire goal of uh what we now understand as the police is is uh slave patrol get your they fucking would capture ass runaway slaves did you really need to black pill me further i'm j i mean but th this is the reality you know this is the reality of of uh, american history which is unfortunately not really taught in schools and that's why so many people turn the you know so many people turn a blind eye to all of this that's still ongoing in America. Slavery is legal in America. Going back to that, though, going back to the Supreme Court case, um, you know, things that make it a little bit easier to, to jail people, even if they incriminate themselves, uh, the Miranda laws are now taken. Yeah, so these are two decisions, and they're all along party lines, which let's just say, I mean, it's just a partisan body now. It's 6-3 on everything, and all the justices on the Supreme Court are just... They're, they're groomed uh, uh, Christian cultists, um, who, 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 Christian factious, honestly, uh, based on their decisions here. And, and it, I mean, it's just become such a farce. And next week coming down the pipeline is the abortion one that's going to throw it to states' rights. And, um, and there's, there's one I was just listening to uh, The Daily about. They're bringing to the Supreme Court some kind of a something about the EPA, like uh, they're going to hamstring the president's ability to enact uh, carbon. The Clean Air Act. Yeah, the Clean Air Act. They're they're going to unwind the Clean Air Act, which is seen as one of the most comprehensive. Uh, Passed know. by a Republican, Nixon. Yeah. So they're. Fu I mean, I don't know what to say, man. We're just so fucked. No, I think like this has a this has something to do with the uh, with the tendency for profit to fall. Uh, ultimately, is a consequence of uh, improved productivity, technological achievements, <coughs> um, further industrialization, uh, and and they have to squeeze out profits wherever they can. And the only way to do that, if you're not going to engage in innovation, which requires a lot of capital up front and requires a lot of failure, like big government projects like the Internet are, are not going to happen in a hyper capitalist dystopia that we exist under because everyone's looking for short term profits. Every company is looking for, um, you know, uh, 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 stock buyback programs like improving shareholder value, no matter how marginal it is. Um, so now they are utilizing the government to eke out as many uh, profits as they possibly can that that are going to have a significant cost on the lives of everyday American citizens. This being one of them, you know. Let's get back to poisoning the population with lead. Honestly, <coughs> yes. I don't want lead poisoning will make uh, the <coughs> inevitable downfall of American empire more fun. At least, you know what I mean. It's like free drugs, kind of. Well, it's, that's kind of what happened in, in Rome, isn't it? Everyone had lead poisoning, and, like, they're losing their fucking mind. They used to put lead in their wine because they, they thought it tasted good. Maybe it does. Maybe maybe it tastes so good we should try it. Yeah, I'm just saying, dude. You, don't don't knock it till you try it. Should I get Sam to Yeah, Sam, can we get some? Quick? How does that work? Is there, like, how do you get lead in your wine? 
Is that like a liquid form, or do you just put like a powder form of lead? How What's did that, that work? A, uh, uh, you know, um, a wine expert to come in and uh, well, just Google that. I'm genuinely curious because you know some stuff they say like we have baby food. It's fortified with iron, right, Hassan? And so I think we should start fortifying it with lead. There's already lead in baby food. There's lead in everything. <laughs> lead contamination is like uh, is is pretty much like that's the reason why we have not in California. That's the reason why we get warnings in California. Um, on on a number on of different literally things everything. Consuming. Yeah. Right. Uh, wouldn't you know it when you Google around wine and lead? The results it's it's a whole clusterfuck of how to get lead out of wine. Oh man, I want to go not, the other direction. I, I, what the fuck, bro? Too you got it all backwards. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We must return to tradition. That's what we need <laughs> to do. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, modern or modernity. Too much wine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, let's go. Let's turn our gaze to something a little. It's not really funny. It's that. I saw this Jordan Peterson take yesterday, and it's one of the most fucked up things I've seen a public figure tweet out ever. Um. It's pretty incredible. I don't know what has happened to him. He 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 is completely fallen. He said of Elliot Page, you know, the um, Umbrella Academy season three just came out. By the way, love that show. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched season three yet. It's so good. Or I haven't watched season three yet either. It just came out. But uh, between season two and season three, Elliot transitioned. And apparently they're making it part of the show's narrative. And uh, Jordan Peterson, of course, has a problem with that. He says, Remember, uh, what they said in New York Post said, Elliot Page is proud to introduce trans characters on Umbrella Academy. Nothing really wrong with that title at all, right? Well, Jordan Peterson says, remember when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. Just like misgendering Elliot Page, even though the name is right there. Um, yeah, so remember when... I've, dude, I've done so many videos. I feel so vindicated. Like, I've done so many videos on Jordan Peterson, like, very clearly being a transphobe all the way back in, like, 2016, 2017, when he was, like, first popping off. And people get so mad at me. They'd be like, Hassan, how dare you say this about this Jordan This isn't Peterson. even veiled. This is openly hostile, violent, yeah. hateful. But, I, I, but he was I, doing that. He was doing that stuff like way more veiled but uh, and, and way more hidden. But he was still doing that stuff all, yes. all the way back then, too. He, yes. he would constantly contradict himself by being like, you're not a real woman. If you're, if you're trans, you're not a real woman. But then he was like, well... If someone asks me, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll gender Hostile. them correctly. But then he would be like, I'm not doing right, it. Right. I'm not gendering you correctly. Yeah, he would say that. He'd be like, I'll gender you. If you ask, I'll do it because I'm polite. But don't compel me. Like my grandmother compelled me with her pubic hair. Yeah, remember, when, remember when Jordan Peterson was respected? I mean, he should have never been, but he was respected at a certain point. Not well, it, I feel super vindicated for erasing those episodes now, too. But, like, the, here's the funny thing, because the conservatives and Jordan Peterson, they've been on and on about how uh, tr uh, children transitioning and treating children is wrong. And so they have, they have some, they've relaxed onto that, right? And people really, this is a grown-ass person. Yeah. How old is, is Elliot? Because it's bullshit. This, this is a grown ass person, super successful in show business. Thirty-five. Th this thirty-five-year-old person can't make their own decisions now. The doctor is a criminal. I mean, fuck you, yeah, bro. Because, because, ding, ding, fuck ding. You. News flash. It was never about saving the children. Fuck you. And it was always about like you know trying to stop trans people from existing. Um, by any uh, means necessary. That was always the goal. Because they talk about, like, the unfair advantages. People love talking about the unfair advantages that trans people have, like trans uh, women oh, have yeah. in, in sports. Yeah, and it's like, that. okay, well, those advantages go away if, if uh, like, trans kids are allowed to at least take uh, reversible hormone blockers uh, <clears throat> during puberty, right? Uh, or puberty blockers. And yet they're like, nope, can't do that either. Okay, well, you just don't want trans people to exist. That's it. You just think it's like weird to exist. Well, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's the truth. He admitted that, it. My there, favorite, you go. there you go. My favorite part about this tweet is because Jordan Peterson, 
the free speech activist, the uh, uh, marketplace of ideas, he turned off replies. Oh, but that's messed the, up. Here's the nice thing. He still follows me. Anyone that follows him can respond to his tweets. Ooh. So if you go down, there's three tweets, and they're all roasting him. Mine is, this is why I raced your episodes, bigot. Va yeah, that's pretty bad, dude. Oh, I got to get in on that. What am I doing? I'm slacking. Does he anyway. follow you? Yeah. He does? I don't know why. Let's go, bro. Get in there. This I don't know why he still follows me. Yeah, he follows me, too. I was like, okay, let's do this. And then Vosh left one comment that says, picture my former high school principal burning in hell because of the beginning of my graduation. He said he was proud to introduce the graduating class. So there you go. Pride is a sin. Yeah. And that's I, why, I and that's why Michaela is so fucked up. He, he's never been proud of her because it's a sin. <laughs> he says, listen, I, I'd like to support you, but it, uh, uh, it's a sin. I did not fuck my dog. What? What? <laughs> what the fuck was that's that, the, Jordan? That's that's super suspicious. That's like I that's like the Uvalde Police Department. <laughs> that's like the Uvalde Police Department being like, "We did not shoot any of the kids." <laughs> Wait, Please. Jordan, did you have more to say? I did not put my dick anywhere near my dog. <laughs> it's, okay, I got a disclaimer here. Is that's a that's an AI voice. Oh my and god! Jordan sued the creator of this, so I need to say explicitly that's not actually Jordan's voice. Even though play the whole thing though, just for lols. But this is not Jordan Peterson's voice. I'm just gonna say that outright. I've never done anything weird with my dogs. I did not fuck my dog. I did not come on my dog. <laughs> oh my god! I did not put my dick anywhere near my dog. And fuck you <laughs> if you don't like it. <laughs> It's, uh -huh. a, it's a parody of Shane Dawson's. Yeah, I was about to say, dad. like, yeah. Shane Dawson, Jordan Peterson collab is like the next wave of Supreme collabs. Is yes. YouTube and, careers that are falling apart, just and then merging. The, the only other comment here by the new Peel peer review is Jordan as trying to figure out the Chaos Dragon and Emergency Clown Nose. So there's three responses and they're all dunking on him, which is awesome. And that's that. Yeah, but and what, that's a, that. what a hateful bitch ass fucking loser. Yeah. I wrote yes. him I wrote him a message. I was hoping he would respond because you know, he was responding to me before. Um we need to get him on the pod, dude. I Gordon? don't think he follows know. both of us. Like what the fuck? Like just get on come on he the pod. He doesn't follow that Jordan. many people either, only five hundred. Yeah, come on the pod. Why is he it, it's all it almost feels like he's just only following the left now. What what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, Come on the I pod. Said, I, I tweeted at him, hoping he'd see it. Open invitation for Jordan, and I, for those I, I, of we and, can email him. We have we have his email address. Let's just invite him. And for I the guess. people that don't understand, there's a difference between like Ethan platforming Jordan Peterson and then uh, not feeling comfortable about having that footage up versus like actually having a conversation where uh, it, there can be a little bit more contentious. Yes. A, a, a debate, yes. if you will. I know a lot of you debate perverts love that. So. <laughs> So maybe we'll just send him an email and say something like, hey, you know, we've got this show. You follow both of us. We want to have a respectful conversation, <laughs> obviously coming from different perspectives. Yeah. But uh, hopefully respectful. And then maybe he can I mean, save you. Should, you know what I mean? Uh, from we the, should have from a bunch the... of trans people in the audience, a live audience. And also, I mean, is it is it really cool to lie you know, when we're reaching Will out? Will it be a respectful Hassan if we have him on? <laughs> Will I be? Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, we'll be respectful. Oh, no, I, I have no issue being. Uh, I have no issue being respectful to people that yeah. I'm that I'm conversing with. I mean, I, I, I like you know. It's just it so we'll, depends. We'll be respectful when he's here. We'll I don't think Jordan Peterson. Is, I don't think Jordan Peterson is dumb enough to to get like really riled up and say like really stupid shit that'll piss me off. So like, yeah, it'll be respectful. But here, I wrote this. I wrote him. This tweet, I don't know if this is going to help. Uh, it says, Jordan, you have completely lost the plot. Anything that was inspiring about you is long gone. You have whored yourself out to the worst among us. Now you so are nothing more than a useful idiot to the hordes of hateful bigots. You have forsaken any semblance of decency. Shame on you. So I don't know. It's, it's going to mm. like that one. Beautiful. Okay. Well, it's, it's getting a little bit harder for... <laughs> For us to bring Jordan Peterson. I was so pissed at that tweet. I was like, wow. This but they would think so he's super cool if, if he walks into, like, you know, treacherous waters. I mean, this is a bunker uh, deep hidden under uh, Pyongyang in a, in a facility <laughs> in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. He'd have to fly out here. Obviously, it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
if he if he did come here, door. he would look like a, he'd look like a champion, and he could own us because we're both stupid as fuck, right? Like, yeah, I no. mean, we're both not I, smart. You're smarter than no, me. no, no, no. I'm I'm an idiot. What do you mean? But I'm you, not smart at all. I'm just, I'm an smart, absolute dumbass. Points, but he's he's a PhD. It's easy. Yeah, he's a he's fucking a, doctor, bro. He's he's a doctor. Yeah, uh, a doctor of these nuts. I don't love. Where you at? I, I don't know what that. Okay. Very good. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm, oh no, laughter that time. <laughs> love loves these nuts jokes. Oh. Okay. Not everyone's young and healthy. By the way, I don't know if we should play those sound bites anymore because he did sue the creator. Okay. And even though we say it on, I, it's so fucking funny, Zach, and I love it. Okay. But we've said here explicitly it's not real. Yes. And if we keep playing it. We'll have to say that every time. And okay. I think we just shouldn't. shouldn't. Okay. I Wait, he didn't sue them? What, what's the story with it, Cam? I think he just got really mad that there's a deep fake of, uh, like a deep fake generator of him out there, and he kind of got like litigious a little bit in his talk about it. I'll have to, I'll, I'll have to look into but it. But didn't now. actually follow through. Yeah. It, which but resulted didn't, didn't in. Didn't he get it shut down? Yeah, it just resulted in the creator himself taking it down off his own accord. Oh, man. I wonder what's out of, the out of fear. Let me consult with a lawyer before we continue. All right, I'll, I'll hold back on Because if we get now. approval, then we'll play it till the sun comes up. For right now, I'll hold back on those. Hassan, maybe you can decode this for me. You know Scott Adams, the Dilbert guy, who's like a MAGA darling? The worst among us? Hashtag hunted? Oh, uh, I don't know. Does he think like, does he think that means like, you know, conservatives are being hunted? Yes. Is that what well, he's he, trying to say? He I don't does think know. that because he's tweeted yeah, so, that before, but I don't get what, how that connects to your tweet. Either. We were trying to figure this out. I and think this he's just like he's being like a like a hysterical lip, but on the other side, where he's like, "Oh, like you're you're dehumanizing. You are dehumanizing conservatives." He just said trans people should die, basically. Yeah, and he's like, "Yo, we're being hunted." No, but. Mm. He, Republicans oh, I will be it. hunted. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. How many times have Democrats tried to jail or otherwise punish Republicans or Democrat over Democratic hoaxes? Russian collusion, January 6th FBI operation, Border Patrol whipping hoax. Feels like a pattern forming. Hashtag hunted. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, so he I'm is trying to. Conservatives. What are you he's trying to make that happen. He's trying to make hunted happen. <laughs> 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 Fucking Dilbert, bro. I love that. Such a mid comic, dude. You're making I mean, Dilbert. he is like. He is demonstrated. I mean, I'm not going to do armchair psychology. I don't want to get canceled by the foot soldiers, but he's demonstrating a clear pattern of behavior here that would lead me to uh, hope that he gets medical treatment quickly. Who, Dilbert or Jordan? No, not jo Jordan, too, but uh, definitely Dilbert. Dilbert creator Scott Adams, like, yeah. it's a little... He, he does not seem to be very healthy uh, mentally, in a healthy mental state. Uh, he's, he's uh, you know, seeing... Patterns, pattern, recognizing patterns where no such pattern exists. Is your is your TV talking to you, uh, Dilbert guy? Are you hearing voices that uh, telling you to do stuff? Uh, this could be a sign. Yeah. Of psychosis, paranoia. Do you guys remember this uh, tweet thread that he put up? Number of times a real gun has been pointed at my head. Five? What the fuck have you done in life, bro? Damn, bro. Number People of were like, yo, I fucking I've hate ever... Dilbert. How dare you? This Dilbert guy is living a dangerous life. Yep. Number, I've never seen this, Dan. <laughs> Number of fights I've been in, zero. I attacked two bullies in my teen years, but they surrendered without countering. What a badass, bro. So cool. This Dilbert guy's a tough dude. I like that he had to specify that he has been in fights, though, but they just fucking surrendered. They, they submitted. You bro. rolled them. Yeah. Like it's zero fights, but then again, I'm because I'm By the way, a badass. Click his photo so you can give context to how badass this bully killer is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's just look, man. <laughs> this is my favorite one because he's just talking about how he's constantly a victim of crime. Apparently, he's had tons of cars stolen from him. Already. Let's see, number of times my car stereo has been stolen four. Number of times my home or garage has been burglared five. Number of times I've been assaulted at knife point two. So this man has had five <laughs> guns and two knives pulled on him. Number of times someone stole more than fifty thousand dollars from me. Five to seven. Five bro. to seven. You can't even remember. At this point, it's all your. It's your fault. What are you yeah. walking around Skid Row at three a.m.? I mean, oh, what the fuck are you With doing? With fifty thousand dollars in unmarked bills. <laughs> what are you doing? How, how, does someone, how does that happen to him? 
No wonder he thinks everyone's like, hunting Kadem. I mean, the man is out walking around Skid Row at 3 a.m. First of all, the FDIC hunting. insurance is like for to, up to $250,000. So what the fuck's going on? Like, what? <laughs> like he, like you can't scam someone and, and, and there's like still $50,000 from him with like no way of, of getting, no legal recourse unless you quite literally got like robbed yeah. and you had like yeah. a bag of $50,000. <laughs> yeah, right. he, well, he's talking about street crime, right? So I'm assuming that's what he means. Because if someone did like white collar crimes against him, that wouldn't drum up the crime hysteria he's going for. The threat isn't even over. He is like, he's been the victim of so I love this time. though. I love it. He's just like, I'm owned all the Whoa. time. I'm the most owned man in America. He, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm the biggest. Wait, there's some really good ones in there, Dan. Number of incurable health issues I've cured myself. Three. Oh, he, you know, oh, dude, he's one of those piss boys. <laughs> you know, he's doing ho like the, the, the home treatment, like drinking his own urine shit. Oh, for sure, oh, dude. Yeah. Fermented urine. Oh, 100%. That's like people that always say incurable health issues I cured, like they always at some point have experimented with piss. Scott <laughs> Adams is a piss boy. A this idea. is a good one, too. <laughs> Number of full days or vacations, no work. I have taken in the past 33 day years, five or so. Maybe that's why you are losing your mind, dude. <laughs> Maybe it's time to take a vacation. I don't get that flex. Dude, you are you need to live your life. Yeah. Uh, like, I, sacrificing I don't, your whole fucking life to a job is not a virtue, man. It's I don't I don't take days off. Like, I work every day, but I love what I do. I, I, it's not a flex, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Just like, I'm very fortunate that I, I could, if I wanted to. I could take as long as a break as I want to. But yeah, that's I the point, not, right? The, yeah. the, the, flexing that on people being just like, you don't work hard enough, bitch. It's like, yeah. well, you draw comics, dude. Yeah, I'm a fucking, I, I yeah. scan inventory at Ralph's. It's yeah, like, he's, bro, he, he's out here acting like he's doing hard labor. Uh, you know, oh, drawing gotta, Dilbert comics. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I got a, actually, I got a Jordan Peterson update. Uh, what is this? This is, sounds good. Uh, a interesting thing. Oh, people... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Jordan Peterson, man. Cowards and Montbanks. What the hell's a Montbank? <laughs> Dude, he's really going deep. Uh, that was my only re uh, criticism of your tweet, Ethan, is you really should have thrown in like Mont... a couple, like yeah. Rapscallion. Called him a Rapscallion <laughs> a couple times. Uh, uh, a Vagabond. Yeah. A Montbank is Fuck a person home. who deceives others, especially in order to trick them out of their money. A charlatan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Mark Jordan Mark. Peterson. <laughs> so yeah, this is Dennis Prager, some fucking pasty pig ass looking fucking frog race bitch ass loser. Oh wait, is that Dennis Prager, my favorite yeah. author, who uh, wrote not one but two famous articles about how you should be able to rape your wife? Yes. Yes. That's him. Oh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, look it up. When a woman isn't in the mood, part one, and when a woman isn't in the mood, part two, uh, by Dennis Prager. Imagine writing a whole book about that. How do coerce Seven your time, partner yeah. into having sex? With Seven-time champion of divorce court. <laughs> how, how did it? Need really, a I can't imagine why so many women divorced. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder, wonder how that happened. Seven times, Dennis. Yeah, that's that's traditional. That's got to be a values, world baby. Right. Talk about family traditions, my dude. Anyway, this is also a great clip. He goes, why the left won't debate even when offered money? And this is great. Dennis Prager says this. And then so many people came out being like, I would love to debate you. Prominent leftists, basically every single one online was like, I would happily debate you. Crickets from, from Dennis. And uh, Jordan comes out. And again, Jordan, everyone is willing to debate your dumb ass too. So... Yeah, what's up? Like, uh, Jordan, please come on. Please come on the stream. Fuck please, you. Please, 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 please come on the stream. I would love <laughs> that. Hundred percent. Well, let's listen to Dennis. Let's I'll give you this. another interesting thing that people don't reflect on. We ache to have them on our shows. We ache to debate them. Shut up. But they won't debate us, yes, they and they won't come on our shows, and they won't us have us on their shows. It's not true. I have offered. Dennis, tens okay, Dennis, of you're inv you're formally invited. I, oh, I'd love to have Dennis Prager on here. Let's too. email Dennis, and then we'll let's see Dennis what this would be great. Mont Blanc. Tim Pool would be great. Like Tim Pool, I, we I, were supposed I, to I, debate. I'll only come. I, I'll only debate you if you fly to my studio during a pandemic. Yeah, and and give me a little kiss on my beanie. I will pull the beanie off, and you will land a little pucker on my bald spot on my head. And that's and the being only castrated? reason. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only way that I will uh, have you on the show. And if you don't abide by these conditions that I put up. Uh, with uh, that are totally unreasonable, then uh, you're a coward and you're afraid. It's like Tim, absolutely, all of it. 
Uh, <laughs> Tim, Tim Pool, like I, 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 we talked during the pandemic, and he was like trying to get me to fly out. Yeah. And I was like, there's no shot I'm doing that. My mom yeah. is living with me. And then he would like every time I went out once, like you know, vaccines came out and stuff. Every time I went out, he was like, "Well, look, he's doing this, he's doing that." I'm like, "Yeah, motherfucker, like we can zoom. Like, That's I'm not trying to be around you, bro. Like, let's just zoom." <laughs> so annoying. And Sam Cedar was trying to debate him too. Yeah, he doesn't it, want that either. It was the height of the pandemic, and he's like, "You have to come in my studio and sit." He lives in like Florida or some fuck ass place on the opposite side of the country. And Sam's like, it's a pandemic. I have kids. I'm not. I, I'm not going to risk f- traveling and going into your a studio with a bunch of people who are v- vocally not vaccinated. But also, like, even if it's not, even if it wasn't the pandemic, like, I just don't want to take time out. Like, it's gonna take like at least one to two days of my streaming schedule uh, to fly to wherever the fuck Tim is. Right? Just soon. apparently his studio is like constantly getting swatted too. I don't know why he keeps admitting that, but. Like, I, I'm not trying to go there, bro. Like, I'm not trying to fucking, uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to hang out with you. If we're going to do it, like, because he asked originally, I was like, yeah, of course. We can do it in a way more convenient manner, whether, whether it's over Zoom or in a location if he comes to L.A. Like, I'm fine with uh, debating him somewhere else, I guess. Not my house, though. And then I will that. say you're a bad person. Yeah. And that's just a fact. So, but, yeah, they, they go, you have to do it in person. It's like, dude, Zoom is fine, bitch. So Dennis Prager, Jordan Peterson, Tim Pool, you're all cordially invited. So uh, we're going to send you uh, official emails inviting you guys onto our show so that we can prove that you're actually Mont- Monte Blancs yourself, bitch. How's, the Mont- Mont- how's my B- Monte Blanc days, Dennis Prager? Here, let's watch this pasty fucking idiot, dumbass loser. Look at him. He looks like the fat head from Rocco's Modern Life. Remember that guy? His neighbor? Uh, Ed Bighead? Yeah, let me pull that up. That's important. Ed Bighead. Of course I remember that's, Ed Bighead. That's important. <laughs> All right, play while you... You remember Ed Bighead? That's oh Dennis God. Prager, guys. Legit. He does. He does it's have the overall of vibes of Ed Bighead. Total, yeah. 100%. If you guys know, you know. Dollars <laughs> To any left-wing columnist on the New York Times to debate me anywhere they want. They could choose the moderator. They could choose the Wait, audience. Can you pause for a second? And serious I know money. we're pausing a lot, but he said, any leftist columnist at the New York Times? Brother, who's a leftist columnist <laughs> at the fucking New York Times? You got like three. You got Elizabeth Brunig. Uh, that's it. Shouts out to Elizabeth. She's like uh, one of the few leftists, like actual leftists at the New York Times. But other than that, like what? He's out, he's out here talking about, like, fucking people who defended the Iraq war and shit, who, like, like Thomas Friedman is a leftist in the eyes of Dennis Prager. It's well, wild. Also, that's pretty niche uh, category of people to say, nobody on the left will debate me. Yeah. There's East plenty of people, people on the left from the New York him. Times. Brunig actually left the New York Times. She's at the Atlantic now. So oh, never mind. Don't even have them. She's not even, she's not even there anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have, like, you have some columnists that are, like, you know, left adjacent, but... There's no, like, actual leftists in the New York Times. Like, it's not a real thing. Yeah, Michael and Barbaro. And that's 99% <laughs> of the New York Times columnists are, are leftists. 90, Maybe oh, he disagrees. 99%. 99% of the columnists in the New York Times are leftists, he says. Well, he does, well, he's like, well, do you believe that you should be able to rape your wife? Then you're leftist. Yeah, if, you, if you don't believe that. You, yeah, if yeah. you don't, you're obviously... All wow, right. you're against spousal rape? Well, must be a leftist. Jeez, what's next? I love those... I not love being those able songs. to f- fucking kill... I'm not going to go there. Uh, yeah. What is the... I thought this wasn't communist China. <laughs> when a woman isn't in the mood, part one. Dude, this is a long Pointing out fuck. it's still up on his website. Oh, yeah, of Yo, course. Can we get an ebook of this? Because I want to... No, no, it's just... It, it's not... It's just two think pieces that he wrote. Can you read some excerpts, Dan? I'm interested. I said... One. AB, AB put them down saying? in the Discord. Uh, There's some really good ones. He said, A husband that his wife loves him first and foremost by her willingness to give her body to him. That's bro, what he said. Oh, what? Yeah. You're talking like medieval king. You, t- you sound like Genghis Khan, bro. <laughs> a husband knows that his wife loves him first and foremost by her willingness to give her body to him. First and foremost. Yeah. Bitch, you've been divorced seven fucking okay, times. I, I, Maybe I think it might have been three. but <laughs> Oh, it's three. <laughs> but still. That's still a lot. 
you know. Actually, I don't know. It might be more than three. Fuck. I, can we, well, I we can find fact it. check that. I'm looking it up. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to spread fake news about. Uh, husband yeah. knows. I <laughs> get this right. I mean, what, after the third, after the second one, it's like, okay, you yeah. know, you you just this is habitual at this if point. You, you get, like the divorce court. If you get divorced twice, just don't get married again, bro. It's all just be just have a girlfriend, a long term. Like, just stop. Well, Ethan Klein. Leftist agitator does not want Dennis Prager to find love. <laughs> I did, no have love, just don't get married. It's not working, bro. Compared yeah. to most women, here's another quote verbatim. Compared to most women's sexual nature, men's sexual nature is far closer to that of an animal. So what? That is the way he is made. Blame God and nature. I mean, he's just literally saying like he's a rapist. <laughs> Pretty much. He's like, blame God. For this is, uh, this is one of the weird God's types plan. I've seen in the world is that people have this insinuation that women don't enjoy sex. And so it's your duty to take it whenever you want because she won't be ready. Uh, Look, for it. and women like sex, just not with you, Dennis. Here, I'll, I'll re that's exactly what it is. Okay, I'm going to read it. First, women need to recognize how a man understands a wife's refusal to have sex with him. A husband knows that his wife <laughs> loves him first and foremost by her willingness to give her body to him. This is rarely the case for women. Few women know their husband loves them because he gives her his body. The idea sounds almost funny. Yeah, dude, it's because... Because it is, it's ridiculous on both ends. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But also, like, yeah, obviously... No woman is going to see that as an act of kindness if, if that man is, Get a load is of hanging it. above them all sweaty. Imagine like, this oh, fucking guy. God. Give me your body, woman. Sweat dripping, sweat dripping down his, oh, his brow. God He's damn. the type of dude, not only does he have, like, um, tonsil stones on his lip like Ted Cruz when it's time to kiss. Oh, God. We're but he, you know when hard. people talk and they start to foam on the sides of the mouth? You know what I mean? Oh, God. He, oh. Does, he gets that for He gets sure. that build up. Yeah. Yeah. A kind, here's another one. A kind woman who is not sexual with her husband is not feminine. She is a kind roommate. <laughs> Dude, I love that. That's so awesome. That's like what a like freshman in college would say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Like, yo, your girl, she's not fucking you. Like, she's not a girl. She's just a roommate, bro, which can't be girls. You know why? I, I just realized why he got divorced seven times. If they don't sleep with him in a week, he just goes straight to City Hall. And Bro, he's just him. horny. He's just horny. That's what it is. He's is, just, like, painfully hey, horny. Sec Republicans are sexy, and don't let anyone tell you different, son. Oh, stop. Look at Ted Cruz with the tonsils stop. on his oh, No, God. he's hot, bro. Stop. I, just, I can't, I can't Conservatives even look. I can't look hot. at the screen. I literally cannot look at that. Okay, I, be honest. Uh, who would you rather uh, fuck, Dennis Prager or Ted Cruz? I would rather die. No, no, no. Easy, you have to easy out. Play the game. Play the game. Would I rather fuck Dennis Prager or Ted Cruz? Honestly, I hate to say it because they're so both so vile. New Ted Cruz with a beard, I think. I think Ted Cruz is more vile. That tonsil is Really? Gone. Dude, Ted would, Cruz oh, is the dude, most come on, vile come on, person come on. alive. No, but bearded Ted Cruz, bearded Ted Cruz. He is look, Ted disgusting. Cruz. Hassan's right, look. Look, he 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 is together. new and improved. He's got a disgusting beard. I probably fuck him before I fuck Dennis Prager. Yeah. Oh, yeah God. It's, really? it's both so bad. Look at that. No, I don't buy it. Gent. No. He, that man has tonsil stones ready to launch at you. God. He's just like so deformed, dude. Okay, we, we gotta stop. We, can we we I, I let the record show that I would rather die in an incredibly <laughs> Painful manner than that's have not an option, bro. Either of these people, you gotta suck one of their dicks. I will, like I said, I would rather. Gotta, not. No, no, even worse than sucking their dick. To be honest, you gotta make out with them. That's both are just disgusting. I, I, like I said, I would rather. I would bite my tongue off. Here's another angle of Ted Cruz with a tonsil stone on his lip. <laughs> what? Dude, why do you have multiple angles? Oh my god. They're being fed to me, so oh. I have no choice but to click it. Oh. oh. Okay. Let's. Wow. Let's Hassan, talk. we've made it 30 seconds through this one minute clip. So let's just fucking finish it and move on, damn. <laughs> that are not, not left. Uh, but they would never do it. I ache to debate them. I would raise $100,000 probably. I could probably raise that to have Tanahisi Coates or Ibram X. Kendi debate Larry Elder. 
Okay, it would end the career of Tanahisi Coates or Ibrahim X. They know that they would be regarded as the moral and intellectual frauds that they are. Damn, Larry bro. would wipe the floor with them. The key to their success, if only, is not enabling us to have an audience. Yeah, if only there was like some fucking dumb uh, <laughs> idiot on the left who like debated Larry Elder, and and thoroughly destroyed him. Wait, you debated you debated Larry. Elder. What? Oh my God, that's right. What I happened? did debate Larry. He said Elder. that he would destroy your career. Yeah, that's so crazy. Weird. That's so crazy that that ha that did happen. Well, I am a fucking idiot apparently because I could have gotten a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> even though yeah. it is a little suspicious that uh, it is a little suspicious that Dennis Bridger was like only the black guys. Yeah, like I noticed he, that. Yeah, that's like that's we, a little weird. I demand dude. a black on black debate. He's like, I have a black champion. <laughs> you know, uh, I will, who I will have you fight. Who's, who's bussy you eating? Sixty-nine percent. Nice. Nice. T Ted Cruz is Ted watching Cruz this winning. right now, being like, "Dub, I'm hot as fuck." Ted Cruz is a friend of the show. Yeah. He we got to suck up to him because uh, he's going to save us from loot boxes. He's you know what? Not I'll be that. saying. <laughs> Two Ted's, uh, but he is Reddit. familiar. I do know for a fact that he is familiar with the house drama uh, of mine, at the very least, because he has said that uh, he has talked about it. To Ted's credit, and it's not much, but he does often engage with people that hate him in a, in a like. He, I remember he did like Jimmy Kimmel's basketball thing, and he he's was. Just, he's just painfully unlikable. Yeah, but he he embraces it, so it's kind of dope. Oh, can you get tell me, guys, is this too much? Should I erase this? Just tell me real fast. Yes. It I, says... I, I, he did? Oh, shit. What did he I say? I was against it in the first place, but since it's already up, I would just say... You are giving clout to just some, like, random weirdo for the record. Had when you zero likes, weirdo. Ethan. Zero No, no, likes. he is a random weirdo, for sure. He's not... He's no longer going to be a random weirdo now because, like, the coalition of fucking haters is going to probably be like, oh, yeah, this is a new champion for us, but... Good, I mean, exactly. fucking go hang out with Keemstar if, that, if that's your dream. This is uh, Alex Mandel. He said... Uh, by the way, we found out that he's like a Keemstar simp, which I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole. It's embarrassing. Like, just like a month ago, he was tweeting at Keemstar being like, yo, you're in L.A., let's hang out. Which c explains a lot, honestly, but I, 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 I'm not trying to cause beef here or anything. But what I know, well, I, well, no, I wasn't until I saw That's not acceptable. This. Being a conservative is one thing, but like, you're a Keemstar fan, bro. That's a such an embarrassing man thing. Who's wanted to grown man, you. child, like, that's a, that's an abortion that should have happened, okay? Like, if you're a, <laughs> how are you going to fucking act like you're a fan of Keemstar? At least say like, oh, I, I like the drama that he covers or whatever, but like you're gonna be like, I'm a fan of Keemstar. Oh, let's hang out. <laughs> this motherfucker doesn't have any fans. Like he doesn't even have friends, bro. He that, like that's what I always thought. And then I was like, well, anyone that watches Keemstar has to be like a kid. And I don't think anyone over 18 could possibly consume this. No, he just like sucks up to like some up and coming content creators to like see if he can, you know get a little bit of their audience to become like, uh, you know, drama fiends for his content while simultaneously like uh, bashing whoever the fuck he can that he has declared an enemy, right? And ultimately it's not like a very, I mean, it's been a successful business strategy for him so far, but it's not very successful with him like becoming, uh, you know, it's not very successful for him having like any consistent relationships or friendships. Well, I know like for a fact that everybody despises him in the industry straight up. I guarantee Keemstar is going to reach out. They're going to be BFFs. I can't wait for a Keemstar Howie I feel like, photo. I feel like they already reached out. Alex and Keem. They made a Prior to already. you coming on, yeah. Well, anyway. Lindsey Graham I wasn't going to say anything. We were, we were going to talk about Ted Cruz. Last thing I always want to say. I always love bringing this up. Lindsey Graham once said, if Ted Cruz was murdered on the Senate floor, you'd find zero witnesses. That's awesome. <laughs> Lindsey Graham said that? Yeah, and Lindsey Graham himself is not exactly the most, the bell of the ball or popular in general. So I just, I need to answer on this, guys. So I wasn't going to say anything. I was like, fine, he's a Keemstar stan. It makes total sense. But I saw on the, someone sent this, or I saw it on the server or something. Someone said, hey, you had a blah, blah, blah. You had Ethan on. Why'd you have to do that? Whatever. And then he responded, how does Ethan's dick taste? And I was like, hell nah, bro. So I was, you For know. 15 likes. Oh, my God. Well, it had zero when I saw it, to be totally Exactly. It, and it would have stayed at zero if you just ignored it. The, honestly, that's a perfect example of how this works. And I do this all the fucking time, too. I can't stop myself. But, like, 
This is how you breathe air because you have you breathe air into your fucking haters, and and this is how they gain clout. I'm mm-hmm. fine with him having clout. Alex, have the clout. You know, no, but like, I, you... I can't wait for him to hang out with Keemstar. I think that'll be great for for everybody. But he, I says, well, you took it pretty deep on Monday. You tell me. <laughs> so should I erase it? Can we do a poll? I would. I, I mean, if you delete it now, then people are gonna be like, "Oh, you coward! You deleted it because you were mm-hmm. afraid or some shit." Oh wait, let me read his response because maybe it's nice, and then I f- will feel bad. Oh, There's boy. more. He has five tweets about it on this. Oh shit! Okay, let's just. Re- sorry. You go. Sorry to pull you into this, Hassan. I just need to nah, know what shit. to do. <laughs> Chet said, "Alex is how he's Chet." I do <laughs> totally. <laughs> how dare? How dare Chet say that? Chet Hanks at least Pussy. is like Chet has clout. Chet has fucking no. Own it, clout, at least like though. Chet Hanks, flat. whether oblivious or aware, is an entertaining Chet figure. Chet, oh, yeah. Shout out to the island. And, Fuck Alex Mandel, man. And he, and he also <laughs> did. <laughs> Pussy clout. That's, that's actually pretty good. Thank you. It's like surprise. I've why been are practicing you, for you. Why are you good at that? Well, Shout out to the island! We've been talking about Chet for like two That's years. That's so yeah. weird because like oh, your, your, your pot was is not good, obviously, but like your Chet was. I'm is, bad. Yeah. I'm bad at impressions, but I'm glad to hear that that one. That's, <laughs> That's one that actually is solid. Alex Mandel, pussy clap. <laughs> I'm not the one filled with hate here. I can I can like Keemstar and Ethan at the same time. I was excited for Ethan to come on. Hope you guys can find something more accurate and meaningful to spend your time on. All right, let me, let me, or can you send me the thread? Because I, I, I don't know. Everything's all confusing. Here. Bro, wait. He fucking responded to Keemstar. Oh, Keemstar is definitely going to hit him up now. Yeah. He, he hit up Keemstar. He says, you're in LA. And that's then a- got, and then got fucking ignored by Keemstar. By Keemstar. Damn, bro. Keemstar was like, sorry. But gonna he- hang out with some 14-year-olds, actually, <laughs> instead of you. Because they have TikTok clout. If he and knew he was reasons. Howie's son, he would have responded. But he didn't. Damn. Hassan. So, wants bad stuff to happen to black people. God damn it. Keem. Love that drop. It's <laughs> Got so me so good. good. <laughs> so he said he'd been hitting up Kim for a while. I'm not the Oh, this he responded to this tweet? His original one asking Kim if he's in LA. He said, I'm not the one filled with hate here. I can like Kim and Ethan at the same time. I was excited for Ethan to come on. Hope you guys can find something more accurate and meaningful to spend your time on. Okay, fair enough. Can you like Kim and Ethan at the same time? Maybe. No, not no, really. Not really. You can't not like really. Keem. That's just the only <laughs> yeah, part yeah. of it. That, like, I don't not care. Really. I don't care. You can like whoever the fuck you want, but like, when you say you enjoy Keemstar's content, that's a self-report. Like, you should keep that. You should keep that a secret. Yeah. Like, you mm-hmm. should be embarrassed to admit. Well, that. it's obvious. The thing to me that kind of blew my mind is in the interview, I was like, "This is some fallen fan questions," and obviously, it was him that loaded them up. Mm-hmm. And finding out he's a Keemstar fan really connects the dots. Uh, someone said, bro, screenshots of Keemstar's timeline is not notes. If you want to pretend to have a brain, try not to regurgitate his exact points. Uh, I didn't show them a single Keemstar tweet. He did pull up a Keemstar tweet uh, during the show. I said, bring up the clip of me saying B, B word. And that's the one he used? And he pulled up. I said, pull it. I said, get a clip of it in the whole context. And this dude pulled up Keemstar's tweet, <laughs> being like you know, Ethan's you know a domestic have terrorist. All the content, yeah, all the context. He said, "Huh? I didn't show them a single Keemstar tweet. There's a girl who runs the content research for what they see on the podcast, and she doesn't even know who Keemstar is." Okay, fair enough. Huh? There it is. So should I erase it? What do you guys think? I I don't know. It doesn't do, really, do you? It's already done. It's already done. You shouldn't have done it in the first place. I, opinion, I just, but. after everything that happened, and then finding out I was a Keemstar stan, and then being like, how does Ethan's dick taste? Happened. Everybody enjoyed the show. It was fine. No, I know. It was fine. You're right. It was totally fine. Yeah. I can't. Uh, no, not everything is fine. He fucking bleeped my name. What the fuck's that? Oh, about? that is weird as fuck. That's yeah, weird yeah. as hell, bro. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Ethan yeah, did it that for, was very uh, weird. He did it for Hassan. That's what it was all bleep about. Hassan, and he bleeped Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are on the same level apparently. Yeah, it's messed up. Well, so I think I don't know what happened, but I said so. There was a point I was saying everything that I could to offend Howie, mm-hmm. and I kept saying "be the NRA" a bunch of times, and I was just trying to think of controversial things to say. So at one point I said, "Oh, you should hear what my co-host said." He said. 
uh, Dan Crenshaw got skull fucked, and yeah, I, I, America, I watched that part. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I it was totally fine, right? It, but I, in yeah. retrospect, I was like, I don't want I don't want it to seem like I'm throwing Hassan under the bus. So I texted Howie and said, Can you please remove that part where I said where I was talking about my co-host? No, I don't give a shit. Well, anyway, I think what they did is bleeped your name and kept it in. Which oh, is nobody of, will be able to yeah. figure out who you're which talking is about kind of now. Crazy. Well, no, they they also didn't censor after because you bring my name up again yeah. and they didn't censor the second time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that at least makes sense now. Like, but yeah, it doesn't cause really. Because I was wondering. I mean, it's still a weird way to do it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I because I said, I can you remove that part, please? Because right. I don't want it to seem like you know I'm throwing my mm -hmm. buddy under the bus. I just I wasn't sure how who would play. It came out fine, but 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 yeah, they just he was bleeped. he was very offended by that. That was it was cool to see him like get you know <laughs> flail around a little bit. Like what? Oh, that's that's not woke. How is that woke? <laughs> that's not woke. I was like, I'm not woke, motherfucker. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Who said anything about woke? But you know, the truth is, it did go fine. But honestly, they because of the line of questions and how they presented, they it was a they tried to do a gotcha. Mm -hmm. It ended up good. I don't think Howie and his sister knew what was happening. They were his just daughter. daughter. Yeah. His his what? Howie's his daughter. What did, his what did I say? Sister. Sister. What's wrong with me, dude? My brain You're sometimes thinking of Alex's don't work sister. so good. Alex's sister. My brain don't work so good. Yeah, Alex's sister, but I don't know. And, and it's just kind of, I was like, man, what the fuck? It's good to see you outside of the podcast, your own yeah, well, Nobody uh, else you know, is going to invite me on the show again after this. So that's that's not true. I'm, I'm sure plenty of people uh, would still love to do that. That what episode has... Ten times the views of any other episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, to be one, honest, I, I do get a, I do get invited on people's shows, but I don't like doing other people's shows. So I know. It was a rare. You don't even come on my show. I've, I've asked you to come on. Come I do. On I will time. come on your show. It's just, I don't know. It's, like, it's so hard. It's so hard to commit to stuff, man. I just, I honestly, like, I have a wedding to go to this weekend, and it's ruining my whole month. Just oh, I know, I know what that's like, though. <laughs> I, and it's just, you know, I, I just putting, making plans is just the bane of my existence. I agree, one hundred percent. I'm, a, I'm the same boat. Everybody's got their little plans. Like as long as, as long as I have my structure, my regimen, I'm fine. But the moment that I, uh, the moment that like something uh, throws it off, which by the way, I'm gonna be going. Uh, I, I'll be going to Europe. So is that right? When yeah, on the week of uh, 14th, I'm not gonna be able to do the leftovers podcast. Is July? Yeah, in July. Are you just taking a vacation? No, no, it's just for work. But what is what's TwitchCon? TwitchCon EU in Amsterdam. Say what? TwitchCon oh, EU. Twitch in, yeah, in Amsterdam. Oh shit! I'm planning on going to potentially going to uh, you know Oi Brov land before beforehand to the UK. Hmm. Hang out with some people there, some Oi content bro. creators there. Nice man, good. That's great. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll see, but it, but it's but I'm in the same boat where I'm like, oh, my IRL backpack is not working. How that's are we gonna a big one. Work huh? like yeah, that's how am I gonna how am I gonna have like a consistent streaming schedule? Like those are all things that are just like weighing on my consciousness right now, every single moment. Yeah, so yeah, with tickets. your uh, with your IRL backpack, um, I know a thing or two about those. I could probably fix it for you. Yeah, I just it, 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 that's a good offer. He's really good with that stuff. All right, well, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, I, I need I need help on that right now for sure. You're gonna need European SIM cards and stuff too. It's a yeah, whole thing. So. That's the that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, I got to figure that stuff out. But yeah, I mean, having having the Howie podcast coming up, it was just ruined my whole fucking week. I was like, God damn, I have to do this podcast on Friday. Like, fuck. And I, I was all week jokingly, I was saying to Elis, don't take it seriously, but I was being like, fuck Howie Mandel and a stupid fucking podcast all week because I was just like so annoyed. <laughs> I thought you were going to bail for sure. You did? Yeah, 100%. No. I well, I'm glad you didn't bail. Yeah. That's funny. No, I wasn't, no, no, I wasn't going to bail. But um, anyway, can we do a poll? Should I just erase this? I don't know. It was our, <laughs> it's just, I'll erase right. it. I'll, I'll back it up. I don't know. Just do a poll. You already posted it. Who cares? I, I kind of I was the yeah. main person telling you not to post it, but now that it's out there, I don't yeah. know what. It's also like not the worst thing. Who cares? Yeah, and Howie, I apologize. You know, I, I, I did. You apologize I, for throat fucking his son. I did. <laughs> I'm fucked sorry. up, Howie. Say, I'm yeah. sorry, Howie. Howie, I apologize for coming in your pockets and then having sexual intercourse with your son's throat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Messed up. <laughs> Nothing personal. Yeah. Uh. <laughs>
But the good news, uh, well, the good news is for Alex is that he's probably going to finally meet his idol, Keemstar. Mm-hmm. Probably. And they're probably going to be besties. You're and like I said, I can't wait for Keemstar to come on the podcast, and I can't wait for a selfie with Howie, Keemstar, and Alex. Oh, well, That's going to be epic. <laughs> we got to frame that. I really can't wait. He, what, I, I'd love to see what he talks about. Keemstar should pay you royalties. He's keeping his career alive, yes, dude. Yes, absolutely. Too, to be honest. <laughs> that, that's totally true, man. And I, li- and, I, and, I, and I like to do that for him. Yeah, that's socialism, Are, did baby. Did you put up a poll, Dan? Oh, no, I thought you I thought you came to your conclusion. All right. I'll no, I'm wait. I, I need the people's... Ethan, delete the tweet. I need the and, people's no. approval. Okay. Um, while you figure that out, I'm going to go pee, and then after that, okay. let's get to the rhino hunting. Okay, all right. Because that one's really good. My God, we're not getting through anything today, by the way. We're an hour into the show, and we've done one... Thing from the doctor? We're having fun. We watched one one minute clip. <laughs> one item? Which is fine. It's fine. Oh, wow. Okay. 85%, yeah. 86% say no. So the people mm-hmm. have spoken. The people have spoken. It's already out. And it is pretty funny. I was against it too, but it is. That's funny. the thing is like, yeah. it made some people here laugh, and I was like, well, that. That's pretty good. That, yeah. That's rare. Some bad influences in this office. Yeah. I, and then Ela yelled at me, though, when she saw it. Which, of course. It. She said, predictable. She said, Ethan, you need to have some class sometimes. <laughs> yes, there you go. And Ela, if you're watching, who care- Ela. She, said, she said, who cares if his son is a douche? Yes, she gets it. It's not funny. <laughs> me and Dan were against it. That's it. Not calling anyone out, but me and Dan. I'm not, I don't want to say who. I don't want to name names, but there was several people here. Mm-hmm. People, do- and it's. In the know, studio that supported me. I'm starting to okay. realize there's a, cer- there's a certain set. Yep. In this office, mm-hmm. bad boys. That are they're the little devils on mm. Ethan's shoulder. I'll they're actually. Can I like, say the names? Can I say the names of my supporters? It was me. So it was <laughs> Olivia, Cam, and Zach. Were like, do it. It's yep. awesome. And Olivia's the one actually that tilted me. Yep. Because you know. Okay. Uh, Cam is the one that surprises me. Olivia and Zach, I get. Olivia wanted to sue Havoc. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I like the drama of it all. What can I say? Okay, yeah, but guys, exactly. I, I do. I actually here. Let, let me say this. In, in my defense, I was just grumpy this morning. <laughs> I was just a grumpy little boy. I, I just, just thought it was fucking quick, witty, and funny. I don't know. Thanks, bro. And that too. I'm sorry, Elo. I'm, I apologize. Elo. Well, I sh- I know better than to listen to you, but Olivia's. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned that lesson yeah. over the years. Bro. Wait. So let me just do my due diligence and just say, uh, for the record. I can't. What's how do you spell Mand- Mandel like that? Here it is. Why is there a fucking random Harry Styles in the bathroom? Bro? <laughs> Dude, oh. get the shit out of me this morning. What the <laughs> fuck? I you? walked in to me pee and almost pissed my pants. <laughs> the sh- Harry Styles is just popping out, dude. He's just and hanging they keep, out there. They keep moving it. Whoever's doing it keeps can, moving it. Can somebody, Olivia? Can you go take a picture of what it looks like when you walk into the bathroom? I want to show the audience what what we're talking about here. It's also the. It's also the fucking uh, the the nightclub bathroom one. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Olivia's yeah, party bumping. bathroom. That was the episode that got removed when we unveiled the party bathroom when we oh, got God, our that's week right. suspension. So it's the real party in there with Harry. Yeah. yeah. So just to just to do my due diligence here and give Alex a fair shake, he said, currently getting a horde of H three fans tweeting me with some assumptions. I don't like him. I like him. Ethan and I talked after the podcast, even making him aware I've never seen any Leafy's content. No drama between us at all. Don't make some up. Okay. He's right. There's no drama between us. That's except for this drama. <laughs> don't don't harass Alex. It's all good. It's fine. Don't don't you know, it's just, uh, I mean uh, Well, am I crazy? I didn't misinterpret the How's Ethan's dick taste comment, right? No, that, I think he's, yeah, he's that was just a agitating. Little, yeah, that was a little yeah, aggressive. No, uh, yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. But, yeah. Wow, okay, but don't, sure. don't harass him, guys. Leave the Mendels alone. They're good people. Pussy clot! Boo, boo, boo! Big up! Chit forever, man! Can you say Alex Mandel again in that voice? Alex Mandel! <laughs> Chit in <our> forever! <laughs> Psych! Tom Hanks, double ya! <laughs> 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 we 100% could have Chet on, by the way. No, Chet hates me. He oh, yeah. It, oh, he <laughs> hates you? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't yeah. hate me. We've DM'd before. We oh, well, I, maybe you can mend the bridge because yeah. we wanted to have him on and uh, 
Yeah, you DM'd Ethan like, fuck you, you fat fuck or something. It was actually kind of weird because I had Andrew Santino on and we were talking about Chet. It wasn't really that bad. We were just doing our... Andrew does an incredible Chet impression. Uh-huh. And Andrew's a really nice guy. He really is. And Chet sent Andrew... Andrew's, for, the, Andrew's the ginger yeah. Uh, yeah. dude, right? Yeah, he's funny as hell. He's I like super him. super nice, too. A good dude. Yeah, I like and him. And so Chet sent... Andrew, out of the blue, a really threatening, like straight up aggressive, threatening message. Yeah. I don't remember what it was exactly. And then he also DM'd me like, you fat fuck. I hope I don't keep that energy if I see you in person. <laughs> Is he going to fight you? That'd be funny. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's told, a big dude. No, I don't want to fight Chet. Yeah. Chet will stomp me. He told Andrew, I look forward to running into you one day. Oh, yeah, just straight aggressive, yeah, yeah. like shit. In the mean streets of fucking Beverly Glen, baby. You know what <laughs> <Yeah>. I mean? <laughs> right. what the fuck? Why is he acting like he's just so tough? Oh, Jesus. He's I hope I don't tough. run into ya on Venice Beach, man. Yeah. I be spending my days. Yeah, on my on my like multi million dollar fucking you know penthouse in in Venice. <laughs> yeah, that'd so, be real scary if I saw you. So anyway, he <laughs> he basically threatened us with violence, and then I could think it all went downhill from there. Chet is Joker brand. Full force. Here I found it. Oh, we have the DM. Oh, he said that to Santino. Yeah, yeah, I look forward to running into you one day. Tell me that you have a sense of humor. Enjoy the satire of the impression. Nah. To tell you that is going to be hilarious, not just not for you. You do understand the comedy, right? I thought he sent him something Wait, more threatening. Wait, why did he fucking post these DMs that make him look bad? No, it was Andrew, and then he erased Andrew. them real fast. I thought I thought Andrew posted them. He did. Oh, he did. He did. Andrew posted them, and then he was like, "Ah, we shouldn't fuck with them. He seems unstable." Yeah. Okay. But, uh, I just. He, but yeah, Andrew. Andrew posted them and then erased it. Pretty crazy. So one of the chats said, Weezer's Beverly Hills is his hood anthem. <laughs> <laughs> True. Chet, Chet and... Uh, I mean, his old music. Chet and Alex are probably uh, neighbors. We come from the hard streets of Malibu. <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> fuck with us. He's, he's, he's a very... He's a wonderful character. He's fun. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm sorry, Mandel family. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. You guys, listen. You guys did a no deal deal or no deal with me, and my case had a big fat zero in it. So I'm sorry. You guys just pulled the wrong case. <laughs> you thought you were gonna get a million, but this is one of those. I have no idea what you're referencing. Deal, no deal. That's how he's big I show. I don't know what the fuck. What that the is. fuck? I have no idea. It was a game show that was on like ten what? years ago. Deal, no deal. Do you open the briefcase? Bro, I grew up in Turkey. I don't fucking know. No, it's just, it's just, it just happened a couple years ago. Oh, is this still a Here, thing? pull up a picture. It, it was a while ago. Was it? I've no, never, yeah. I've also never had cable. So, like, I've been living in America since 2009, and I've never had cable. So I don't want, like, I don't see any of these TV shows. I thought that was a big deal. Though. Unless they're, like, super old TV shows that, are, that we're resurfacing to watch to make fun of. I mean, it... it I think the last episode was like a decade ago. It, oh, is that right? Yeah. It was two. No, it's Oh my God. Look at that savage fucking beard, bro. What does he have? I, he has the triangle. I, I forgot he had that wicked. Oh skull my patch. God. Wait, why is he like a. Does he ride like a like a hog? Oh, this was this was like mid 2000s, I want to say. I don't think that soul patch was ever acceptable. 2005. Peace and love, Howie. Bro, yeah, there is no time yeah. period when that was like an appropriate thing to have on your face. I, mean, I, I love that. That's kind of the, the Fred Durst look, right? Didn't that's true. That? Did it all for the Nucky. Yeah. Go to the top left. I love this Charlie's Angel vibes of this. Looks like maybe the the beard was short lived. <laughs> you, anyway, clean shaven. Deal No Deal was like a generation defining game show. I mean, it was a big deal. 2005 is when it started. Damn. Okay, I'm old as shit. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't in the country back then. Is that right? You weren't here in 2005. No, I was in the mean streets of Turkey, Ankara. When did you move here? 2009. So you've only came been to here. Miami. Oh, you landed in Miami. Yeah. How was that? Fucking. It, it's. It's kind of weird there. No. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like everything you see out of Florida. Like, you know how a uh, friend of the show, Andrew, does a lot of great, you know, videos like Channel 5 just recently yeah. did a Daytona, uh, a Daytona bike rally thing. Yeah. Like, Florida is like that across the board. It's just like in a stasis period. Like, Pretty you, wild. You enter, you enter the barrier of Florida and all of a sudden you're just like time slows down. Uh, it, you behave in an erratic way like an insane way. And every part of Florida is like that. 
from Gainesville, Tampa to, you know, Panama City, uh, Panama City Beach, all the way down to Miami, it's just like varying degrees of it. It's like a different flavor in every different part of Florida, but it's the same like weird, uh, you know, time slowed down, you're doing crazy shit attitude. I went, I've been to Florida once to meet DJ Khaled. I did not like it very much. I mean, I thought Orlando was really fun with all the theme parks, but outside of the theme parks, it's pretty fucking nuts around there. Another yeah. one. No, Florida is Florida is PVP we, unlocked. We went to a <laughs> Waffle House. Yeah. It was a little dicey there. Dicey, yeah, Florida dicey. is always Florida is always PVP unlocked. I mean, speaking of which, like there was a there was a state legislature that got fucking murked by a dude in a Prius, like after a, <laughs> after like a like a you know car crash. He got out of his car and shot at like some dude in a Prius, and the dude in the Prius dipped out from the from the passenger seat in the front, hid behind the engine block, got up, one tap the Florida legislator, oh my boom, God. dead. Wait, wait, a legislator got in a gunfight? Yeah, got, bro, this got, happened got, like a couple months ago. Wait, wait, what? That, I mean, that 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 is a Florida story, but whoa. By the way, Waffle House, the food was bomb as fuck, though. I gotta be mm -hmm. straight up. It was a little dicey, dicey. But the food was great. I oh, yeah. The dice satisfied. Yeah. It's really good, though. It's, it was so good. That was the thing. I was like, damn. Wait, let me see. Maybe it wasn't a legislator, but he was like a... GOP rep. GOP representative. They were a house rep. He got in a gunfight with a Prius owner. This is it's fucking it. sick. Yeah, Florida State Board of Administration official killed an apparent road rage road rage shootout. Okay. Yeah. And he had gotten into another like road rage incident at the same exact spot. He's 52 years same old. Same spot. Was yeah. he just camp out there and shoot a passing car? It's cars? just like on his way home. He's just getting fucking angry and and doing like road rage shit. Uh, and you know they pull over following a collision. Okay. He, like, tries to block the dude from leaving with his car. Uh, the driver of the Prius confronted Kuzwanski and then got back into his car to wait for law enforcement to investigate the accident. The exchange then escalated dramatically as Kuzwanski rammed his BMW into the Prius on the driver's door, began pushing the car sideways in the parking lot. Damn! Like, typical BMW drivers, by the way. Holy shit, dude. It's just, like, <laughs> universal. I swear to God. Hey, Kuzwanski hey. then shot a gun at the white Prius. Okay, he's probably like, yeah, this pussy libtard. And then the Prius driver, who also had a gun, shot and fired back in the Kuzwanski's windshield, striking him. Hell wow. yeah. Blap! Shot? Did he yeah. kill him? Yeah, he slid, dude. He's, he, yo, oh, exactly. Oh, fucking <laughs> yeah. chicken dinner, or what did he say? <laughs> yeah. Winner, 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 dinner. dinner. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Boom. Done. Dead. That's crazy. Straight it's up. A good old Western shootout. Yeah, he's a driller. Straight up. <laughs> fucking incredible. Incredibly precise. <laughs> Respect. Respect to the Prius driver. We don't know who he is, but... You know, he's a real one. Probably well, like an accountant, by the way, because that's fucking Florida. You could like <laughs> literally be like, the, I'm the comp troller. And then like you have, uh, you know, an SKS or something. You just like fucking pull out. <laughs> yeah, Florida is a weird place. The weather was, I kind of enjoyed the weather, though, the tropical uh, stormy weather. But so how long were you in Miami till you came? for a year? And then you came to and I to went LA? to Rutgers and then uh, and then I needed to get the fuck out of New Jersey. I was like, this sucks. Oh, you went so from I, Miami to New Jersey? Yeah, Jesus. and then I moved to LA, and I've been living here ever since. So LA, do you like LA compared I to... I love LA, yeah. yeah. Compared to what? <laughs> Miami New or Miami New, Jersey? New Jersey? Yes. I love LA, you know, but, but, but I'm not that worldly. I mean, I've only lived in Israel and New York. I personally love LA and Santa Cruz. It's fairly worldly. No, I think I, think I love Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's got a lot of good, and it's got a lot of bad, but, you know, I, I love living here. Um, especially the weather, you just can't beat it. That's, well, that's like the main reason, even though I never leave my house. I just like the overall vibes. This is <laughs> nice. You you really take it for granted when you go somewhere else, and you're like, whoa, it's cold or not sunny every fucking day in yeah. perfect weather. Like, what is this? But there you have it. So where are we? Uh, Jordan Peterson in drag, of course. Uh, we were going to talk about we were going to talk about some drillers, you know. Well, hold on. Uh, back to if this man hates. Uh, if this man hates drag so much, then explain this. Sorry. Not yeah, it's beautiful. okay when he does it. Sorry, Remember how we beautiful. talked about with Madison Cawthorn, like, straight dudes love being homoerotic with other people that they perceive to be straight as well? Mm -hmm. Like, in a comfortable environment? Especially if it's, like, to belittle, uh, you know, other straight men by doing, like, gay acts on them? Right. This is, a, this is, like, in line with that principle of, like, it's okay if Jordan Peterson does it. 
it's just not okay if someone who is like queer it. presenting doing it. You know what I mean? Because then it's it, then it's indecent. It's serious. We're yeah, then it's a real joke. How absurd. Yeah. Hey, what's the context of drag Peterson? Uh, his daughter posted this photo, I believe. Uh, I think they were just fucking around. I let her have her way. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, my God. No. No, Jordan. Keep going. Keep no, going. No, 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 no. What no, else no. did she I do to you, Jordan? I saw my maternal grandmother sitting by the oh, bank boy. of a swimming pool. Here we go. Which was also a river. Her mm. genital region was exposed oh. dimly. It had the appearance of a thick mat of this hair. This is the worst thing she that we brought up on this planet. She was mindedly she walked over to me Why, with really a handful insightful. of pubic hair PhD. compacted into something resembling a large artist's paintbrush. What's wrong? She pushed. I told Ethan last face. night this is what he should have replied I raised uh, to Jordan's uh, tweet with. Oh, God. I That'd let her, only her reply. I raised my arm <laughs> several times to deflect her hand. What's Finally, unwilling so to hurt her or interfere with her any further, oh, I, just, I let I... her have her way. <laughs> <laughs> my emotional damage. were like a paintbrush. She stroked it on my face. I let her have her way. A dilf? <laughs> Jordan, you're such a fucking kick cartoon character. Yes. Now. All right, what do you want to talk about? Lead we, the way. We can the look. Way. We can we can do a quick rhino hunting yes. tournament because that guy is like fucking insane. Yes, yes. <laughs> and yes. then immediately move on to the main story of the day because like that one is really good. So wait, we've got the rhino hunter, and then what's the 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 one you lightyear? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, so this is a new ad, and there's basically conservatives are an arm race for who's the most fucking crazy. This guy's apparently a former uh, Navy SEAL. And, uh, oh, this tweet was removed by Twitter. This tweet violates the Twitter rules about abusive behavior. Yeah. However, Twitter has determined that it may be in the public's interest for the tweet to remain. And I can't even accessible. see it because, like, I'm not logged into Twitter. So for, for me, because I'm not logged into Twitter, it says age-restricted adult content. Hmm. Yeah. So you can you can quote tweet it. It looks like you can't copy the link, like you have to go to the URL, but you can't do That's it straight awesome. from Twitter. Yeah. So get a load of this fucking lunatic. Um, this is like a badge of honor to be so crazy that Twitter bans you. They're like, hell yeah, yeah dude. Here, watch this shit. I'm Eric Greitens, Navy SEAL, and today we're going rhino hunting. The rhino feeds on corruption and is marked by the stripes of cowardice. Join the MAGA crew, get a rhino hunting permit. There's no bagging limit, no tagging limit, and it doesn't expire until we save our country. Hell yeah! He's gonna murder Republicans. Like, he's uh, like literally oh. saying, I'm gonna fucking... I'm gonna use my weapons to murder Republicans, is what he's saying. So rhino, if you don't know, is Republican in name only. They use it as a derogatory for anyone that doesn't tow the Trump line uh, yeah. uh, uh, perfectly. And I yeah. just find it so interesting that not like, he was like, we'll get to the Democrats later. First, we got to weed out these traitors. Yeah, no, I love that. It's like anarchists on fucking Twitter who constantly are like <laughs> trying to left check people and be like, oh, like wreckers. You know what I mean? People who just routinely be like, oh, you're not left enough. You bought a house. Okay. Like, I like the Republican version of that. Let them fight. It's cool. It's I love I love infighting. That is kind of what's happening there. Yeah. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene's been out being like, they're all fucking traitors. Yeah. Dude. Because, uh, uh, yeah, the J6 stuff. Like, you know, they're not defending the brave American patriots. And I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene is right. Marjorie Taylor yeah. Greene. Titan. Um, so Eric Greitens <laughs> is the, uh, you might be shocked, uh, if you are unfamiliar with American politics, but, uh, Eric himself was, uh, in a position of prominence. It's not like he is some he's random dude. He's been a senator dude. before. No, he's running for Senate in Missouri, but no, oh. he was not, he was not a senator before. He was the governor. Oh, this man was the governor. The, okay. Uh, High yeah. Position. Eric Groper or, or Gropens. Okay. Uh, was the governor. And uh, at the time, uh, he, he had to resign because they had enough votes to impeach him already. Um, he, uh, he, he, like a, a bunch of incredible information came out about him originally that he had sexual intercourse uh, or raped, groped, assaulted, binded with ropes a, uh, a woman binded that he with took photos of yeah and that he was actually Wait, uh, what? well go ahead I'll... not his wife not his wife his wife the, the wife thing is uh new or not new but like additional information so 
who who was this person he he bound and and r worded and why wasn't he arrested because Missouri the governor yes when he was the governor he hit groped and coerced the woman into sexual contact and then said if you come out with this i will show everyone the the footage that i took of you like Jeez. photos that i took of right. you show, yeah so he did like revenge porn too a law that he actually signed into law in Missouri, <laughs> uh, making it like illegal and, and severe, give severe punishments to if you do uh, revenge porn. Surprise! Um, he, he passed that bill. Yeah, and the Republican House of Representatives in Missouri actually thought that this was compelling enough to impeach him. Uh, there were enough votes for him to get impeached, so he resigned the day of his uh, impeachment vote. Um, but yeah, the testimony included, uh, you know, her being locked in a basement, and and. Uh, bound with ropes and and naked as he took photos he i her. was a navy seal boy mm, you could trust me yeah <laughs> now it doesn't end there of course uh then his ex-wife came out and said that he not only beat was her, a perfect husband <laughs> but also beat their child their three-year-old child he like grabbed the three-year-old child by the hair swung him around you know did a bunch of insane shit uh i'm just gonna read you uh, the Here. former wife's affidavit, this is from Southpaw, okay? Okay. Um, Eric's behavior included threats in order to coerce me to, or to do so uh, from, uh, or to do or to refrain from doing uh, and saying certain things. After Eric admitted to me in late January 2021 that he had taken the photo that resulted in the invasion of privacy charge, he threatened that I would be exposed to legal jeopardy if I ever disclosed that, act to any, that fact to anyone, even family members or a therapist. Because of the reach of his influence in Missouri, I believed him, which had the consequence of isolating me from many sources outside of support as his threats escalated and my concerns grew for my safety and that of my children. This is from his former wife. So is this guy leading right now to be a senator? Sure is. Oh my oh, yeah. fucking God. This guy is like a Dexter victim. <laughs> You yeah. know, like, what the fuck? He has uh, wonderful campaign ads like where he like shoots a, a, a minigun. Like a, who would have thought that the yeah. guy threatening to kill fellow Republicans for not being extreme enough yeah. beats his son and wife and like, rapes people? Eric, Eric Greitens is such a fucking psychotic freak that his <laughs> wife actually found solace and comfort by escaping to Texas. When you fucking escape to Texas, dude, like, <laughs> that's how you know shit's really fucked up in Missouri, okay? This guy's gonna be president. Yeah, he beat not only her... Uh, and also uh, threatened with a gun, not only his ex-wife, but also their children. Um, so Mark my words, he's going to be president by the end of the decade, guys. Yeah. Trump's like, that's nothing. I R-worded 30 women, and I'm still president. So yeah. he's leading the polls. This is a great guy to add to the Senate. The, yeah. best, the, best, the best of us. So, okay, there you go. Let's move on to <laughs> our favorite topic of the day, which is, of course, Lightyear. Pixar's new film about uh, Buzz Lightyear. He's got his own feature, Toy Story. Apparently, uh, conservatives are loving the fact that this video movie didn't do great in the box office. It didn't do bad, though, either. But eh, It did kind of bad. For a Toy Story movie or like something in the Toy Story. I don't know what it is. I, I'm I just be not like... interested at all in watching Because it, it looks dumb. Yeah. It's like Buzz. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's got lesbians in it, brother. That's why we're not watching it. So uh, every conservative, every single one of them, had a moral panic because two women kiss in this film. And I wait till you see the clip. Let me show you the clip. Oh, the it's gotta be kiss clip is so funny. It's gotta like, be so gratuitous. Let right? me show like, you this. Tom Brady would be like, "You're not kissing me hard enough." If his son <laughs> kissed him this this gently, okay. This is important context, so you can see what all this. Uh, mania is about. So here it is. Here it is. That's it. That's the whole story. That's fucking You didn't offer a trigger warning, the... brother. What the fuck? Hell I'm gay God. now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I want to do homosexual acts. <laughs> so let's see what Ben Shapiro's uh, perfectly measured take on this is. Disney works to push a not at all secret gay agenda and seeks to add queerness to its programming, according to executive producer Latoya Ravanu. Parents should keep that in mind before deciding whether to take their kids to see Lightyear, which hits theaters this week. What is a 
gay agenda. Like, I don't know what he means. Does he think that Disney is trying to turn people gay? Is that what yes. that means? Yes. The gay agenda is what, just Why would they like, do that? The gay agenda is just uh, diversity, like uh, representation initiatives that, of course, um, capitalist corporations engage in because uh, newsflash, this might come as a shock to all the conservatives in the audience, but like gay people do exist and they buy stuff. <coughs> they buy products. <gasps> Also, I mean, Disney has all notoriously always been gay as hell, so I don't know why the fuck they're, like, super pissed off about, like, overt queerness in their programming. I saw that peck! Um, but basically, he's saying, children are not adults. What may be appropriate for adults is not appropriate for children. That this must be said demonstrates that our society is in a state of moral collapse. Why? Because a, a lesbian collapse? couple, an interracial re lesbian oh. couple, uh, is... Dang, I didn't even world, notice dude. that. Fuck. Yeah. So... Yeah, you guys are not up to date on your on your conservative uh, uh, brain yeah, yeah. rot, you know. So <laughs> they're they're basically saying like if you show this happened in Arthur, like uh, Alabama PBS actually banned Arthur from showing there was because there was a gay marriage episode on and Arthur. Arthur, dang. Yeah. And uh, the idea is that like they just want to keep grooming their children into uh, thinking that like gay people don't exist. So if they do have, God forbid, like a gay child, a queer child, um. Love then, fault. then uh, you know, the kid will want to kill themselves because uh, they can't come out and they can't feel like they what, you know, their okay. feelings I, are valid and that they're acceptable. Um, and that's the that's the agenda. The agenda is to not make children feel that poorly about themselves and to show them that, like, no, you can be a normal human being uh, in a civilized society. You know, that's function. a really good point. If you are a young kid who's confused about his sexuality might be gay uh seeing that actually could probably go a long way to helping kids come out of the closet and exist in a in our society yeah, without wanting to kill of. themselves that's, that's exactly what they're terrified of though they're like no it, it should be we should continue bullying queer people they should live in fear yeah no that's that's exactly the point and, and so they say so weird says, that we play the says, song and dance but like it's just it's, it's how can different. you say this is I mean, this is just so vile. This is the moral collapse of our state? Like, dude, what the fuck, bro? You are such a piece of shit. Yeah, I you think... You are um, such a fucking... I think, like... Uh, piece the, of shit. <laughs> the, the other part of this is that, you know, the, the kiss scene is, like, ridiculous. It's not a big deal. It opened a $50 million weekend, far short of Disney's hoped, 70 to $85 million. That's what the notes say. And that, um, you know, part of it, it was because there was a lot of controversy around it is what they're saying. But like usually that kind of controversy actually factors in to the marketing. Um, I think companies benefit from that because then you see like pushback from the liberal side that then go and consume the content. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like we're all fucking drones at this point. Um, ultimately, uh, I think it was banned in, in 14 countries. Yep. Buzz is your year? Yeah. Oh, what, like the For great, great countries such as Saudi Arabia, stuff like that. Yeah, our allies. Such, yeah, our such, important allies. Such moral authorities as Saudi Arabia. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, the Buzz Lightyear kiss was... United Arab Emirates, probably. Let's see. Yeah, United Arab Emirates, it was banned. Um, Malaysia. Shout out to you exactly where it was banned. Yeah. It, it, I... Where the fuck? Why doesn't this article show? Isn't that oh, awesome okay. that he, yeah. wa he wants to join the list of countries banning. Yeah, nations That's included are so Bahrain, awesome. Egypt, Indonesia, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Malaysia, what's in common Oman, with all those Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and UAE. What? What's in, what's, what's in the common denominator with all those countries? The common denominator in all those countries is that as a consequence of American and Western involvement destroying their uh, you know societies, they have incredibly reactionary incredibly fundamentalist, conservative, oftentimes American state-backed leadership in all of these countries that promote these sorts of fundamentalist, conservative values. These are is ultra... Ben, does Ben like uh, Islamic people? Ben hates that... I, I say this all the time on my stream, but like one of the funniest things about conservatives is that they fucking hate other conservatives for their conservatism. Right. Like, he, they hate... This man hates... Yeah, he hates Muslims. Islam. He, he hates, hates Muslims, Muslims across the board, and yet he wants to be, he wants to be one so bad, or not, or not but like one of these yeah. extremist yeah. ones. There is no, there's yeah, fundamentally no difference between Ben Shapiro. That's why Jordan Peterson, for example, is very popular in, in in Muslim countries. I don't know if you guys knew this or not. 
But well, yeah, AB always says that in his hometown, yeah, Airborne. everybody he's like super popular there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. So functionally, there's no difference between like a, a like a Wahhabist and and Ben. I mean, he's an ultradox, uh, ultra conservative Jewish person, right? That wants to live by that that dogma. So there's no difference. The only main difference is that uh, America is a, a Judeo-Christian nation, right? Like that's the only difference is that his conservatism is considered good and palatable, whereas that exact same kind of conservatism overseas is seen as like barbaric, which I do think is barbaric, but it's barbaric here as well. Yeah, just so, as barbaric. Kind yeah. of interesting, eh? What's this here? If Disney insists on opposing bills that ban sexual indoctrination of kindergartners, I love the just, uh, dude, you're so fucked. Don't go see Lightyear. And if Gillette says true masculinity is teaching your daughter to shave her face, get your ra razors elsewhere. Okay. Dude, These kinds nice. of initiatives are going to fail, though. This is basically the other side of that exact same equation. Look, back in the early 2000s, they used to have, like, you know, Dr. Diet or D D Dr. Pepper 10, it's for boys. You know what I mean? Mm. Remember that sort of stuff? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. there was always marketing initiatives that was like about hyper masculinity and capturing that. These are corporations, they're not people. They only care about, uh, you know, boosting profits, they only care about improving shareholder value, increasing shareholder value. So, they're going to do whatever they can. And right now, we're in an era for the past like 10, 15 years where there's like overcorrection happening on the corporate side. Uh, that that um, creates this air of wokeness, I guess, where corporations act like they care, brands act like they care about social justice initiatives, social justice causes, but it's just for marketing. It's just I'd rather they pretend to, to care though than than not. Yeah, and like, well, it, it, like now as, you're as, seeing this. The now you're seeing Ben Shapiro and the likes of Ben Shapiro and others do the exact same thing that like Gillette is doing when they say fuck toxic masculinity, but in the other direction. And it's a failure because it, at the very least, like Gillette has billions of uh, dollars put into marketing initiatives on top of that. You know, they've like already monopolized a certain part of the market. Like you're not going to be able to get in with Jeremy's razors and like try to tackle that by by being like, yeah, we're we're selling razors, but only for non woke people. <laughs> as bad faith as like. Um uh, a lot of these companies who put up like pride flags and stuff on their logos, as much as they're just doing it to, for profit of incentive, I do think it's better than not. Because I mean, just making that more accepted culturally is, is, is you know, a good yeah. Thing. I mean, they're doing it for cover though. Like they're doing it for sales, and they're also doing it for cover when they shield their other like actual nefarious actions, like funding anti-gay politicians. You know what I mean? You see it all the time. All these companies. I did a video on this where, like, Pride Month corporations uh, and like what their Pride Month initiatives are versus like how much money they've given to uh, anti, expressing anti-LGBT yeah, politicians that's, that's and interesting. political movements. And that's how it works. Walmart will throw up the the black fist and say Black Lives Matter while simultaneously funding a police state that is the cause of the problem, uh, and also funding politicians that that continue a lack of accountability in policing that allows police to keep murdering black people, unarmed black people, uh, at h incredibly disproportionate rates in comparison to any other race. So it's a, it's a systemic problem. Uh, all of this is just like seasoning. I get what you're saying, though. I do understand it. Like, it makes it feel like at it's least better. People, it's better than not, you know. Yeah, but it's just not, it's, a, it's not the end-all, be-all. Uh, no, no, not at all. It's just that... It just adds a little extra vibe, which is good, I think. Yeah. But guess who else was part of this moral panic? Jordan Peterson. Maybe Disney and Pixar could concentrate on telling a story instead of distributing propaganda to children. That room really remind you again, that scene was two seconds long. <laughs> it's a peck. It's yeah. like nothing. Yes, but they're not they're not wrong like as far as anyone that says like these mega corporations need to stop recycling IP and like actually make new and compelling and unique movies. That's not what he said. But that's not what he's saying. No, I know. It, no. It's just like I, I do agree. I agree with that, but that's not what he said. Well, that's what's so annoying. It's like, it's like make good movies. I don't care if there are bad figures in there. Exactly. I don't care if they're showcasing like even homophobia, especially because like in almost all of those circumstances they are showing in a negative light regardless. You know what I mean? As long as it's a good movie. You know, as long as it's compelling, it's new, it's unique, and it's not just like recycling. Well, that's, IP. that's the whole industry been like that for decades. Right? Yeah. 
Jordan is talking about a two-second clip of a peck, and he's reduced the whole film to propaganda for children. I mean, dude, you're mentally ill, Jordan. You, you really have fallen so far. Yes. Yes. Talking about your grandma's pubes and shit, you're delirious. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. more. Um, here's some more. This is from the great... Yeah, the go woke, go broke stuff. I mean, it's so stupid. Plenty of woke films have made money. Like, wouldn't you say, like, Get Out was a woke film and that was, like, gangbusters? So the whole go woke, get broke thing is so fucking dumb. Yeah. And I'm sorry, there's nothing broke about a two, woke about a two second peck, you fucking. Yeah, I think, like, the controversy surrounding this uh, has less to do with, like, its box office performance. Maybe like the international box office if they were banned from multiple countries, like 14 of them that I just read. Um, but ultimately, I, I think like it, people it don't care to do with like people just don't give a shit about Buzz Lightyear. Like no one wanted to see sexy Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which he, also he's a toy. Why? Why? What are we back in like boot camp? Because because they were, yeah, they were sense. saying like this is the character story oh, okay. behind like the actual but person. Nobody cares. The, the real man that the toy was based off of in the universe of Toy Story, which is just such a fucking convoluted, weird-ass premise for a movie that, of course, it wasn't going to do well. Yeah. Um, it's silly. There you have it. There's a, a, one other thing I want to talk about. Is What's your thoughts on this? So you guys know there's, that there's the uh, commission right now for January 6th, and there's a huge breaking story that apparently there was a documentarian crew with Trump and his team during the time when he was working to allegedly overthrow the election, there's hours on that day, on January 6th, where all the phone records were erased. And this crew was apparently there filming this whole time. And the, and the um, committee has subpoenaed them to get the footage. Do you think this is potentially interesting, Hassan, or no? Um, I mean, it's interesting because, like, there's always going to be intrigue surrounding, like, Donald Trump because he's very telegenic and very charismatic and also hot. Um, <laughs> and people 69. are just jealous of him for those reasons. Yeah. But uh, other than that, like, I think at this point, I just want to see people go to jail. And because we're not going to see any of these people go to jail, because uh, oh. while January, the January 6th commission is happening... Uh, Democrats okay. in Congress are also simultaneously like trying to cut deals with the Republicans, you know what I mean, to get legislation done. It's creating this like weird uh, hypocritical stance, which exists in politics to begin with, that everyone kind of intrinsically understands at this point, where you're like, you can't say these guys are trying to steal the election, which they did, they did try, while simultaneously being like, but we also need to protect our institutions and collaborate with them. Uh, especially when the other side doesn't even care about collaborating for the most part, and routinely talks about how your baby killers and baby eaters and stealing elections. Um, I've long uh, mentioned that the election theft, what uh, MSNBC liberals call the big lie, is not necessarily a big lie, but instead uh, a very big part of the Republican campaign strategy and a and Republican effort to undermine election security and make it harder for people to go and, and actually vote, especially in black and brown neighborhoods and poor neighborhoods in general, because those neighborhoods tend to vote for uh, Democrats. Uh, this is, uh, you know, most famously openly admitted by Paul Weyrich, uh, who is like the head of the modern uh, reactionary conservative movement. Um, he calls it the, the goo goo government syndrome, like where he openly lays out in the moral majority, uh, I think it was a moral majority meeting in front of like Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, he just openly states like, we don't want people to vote. We want less people to vote. We win when less people vote. So stop trying to get everybody to vote. Uh, and that is actually, uh, here, let's just play it. This is an incredibly Paul, profoundly important the founding freak. father of the conservative movement addressed a seminal religious right gathering held in Dallas. Yeah, he, he created the moral majority and also, uh, I think, like American Enterprise Institute and numerous other like far right think tanks that are prominent now. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. 
Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. He's right. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. And Jerry Falwell was there. Ronald Reagan was there. Weirich co-founded the Heritage Foundation, Moral Majority, Free Congress, ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. And, um, and he's a really, really important figure for, like an in important uh, thought leader for the right. So what do you think about this doc documentary, though? You think I mean, the documentary is like, Interesting. You have hope that it'll, that I could have something good because every time something like this comes up, it always ends up being a nothing burger. But this time, people seem to have hope that it could be something like really fucked up that they Listen, actually captured on film. I've lost hope a long time ago. You want to know I'm why? Pretty interesting. Because everything that we found out so far, that we found out, the new information that came out is all stuff that we knew already. We knew this shit back in January 6th when it was well, happening. Yeah, I mean, there's a phone call of Trump saying to the like Georgian fucking person in charge of the election. Uh, I want to find me 7,000 yeah. more votes. I mean, I don't know what more you need to hear than that. It doesn't <laughs> matter, though. Like that, it doesn't that's... matter because we have no the Democrats are feckless. They are powerless. They are uh, they're they're incapable of doing anything in a situation like this. Even our attorney general said, like, yeah, we're watching closely, but, you know, don't don't hold out hope for for any sort of well, serious arrest. They posted a clip this morning. I haven't actually seen this. Let's see. Oh, did they already? Yeah. Okay. My father. He's very honest, and he is who he is. He believes everything that he's doing is right. I can't wait to watch this. Well, unless they don't treat me well, in which case you go to war. Dude, can we talk for a minute about January six? I'm sorry. The fact that this exists is so fucking funny to me. Like. He took it upon himself to hire a fucking film crew to document himself trying to steal an election. Like, Trump is... He's awesome. <laughs> he's, he's such great. an unbelievable figure. Best like, president. It's just like, yeah. Well, apparently you were telling me yesterday <laughs> that a lot of his advisors and stuff didn't even know they're, that he they're was doing this. They're claiming that? I don't, like, I, yeah, I don't know yeah, if I they believe it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you I, think I was it's like, bullshit? how is there a camera there and people don't know it's there? No, they, of course they knew, dude. Come on. Like, it, but again, they openly have been talking about like stealing elections and like stopping people from voting for a very you're long saying time. It, you're saying it's, it's basically the norm. It's not of out of course, the ordinary of at all. Course. Dude, okay. He's just, have, he's just more upfront about what every doing. Exactly. Donald Trump's biggest mistake, I guess, is actually what made him so popular which is that he no longer had these like weird, veiled, uh, institutionalist uh, uh, ways of, of talking about voter fraud, which is not a real thing. Um, and instead, he just showed up, said, like, illegal Mexicans are coming into the country and they're stealing your votes. They're voting illegally. Democrats want this to happen. And for a lot of dumbass Americans, that was like, whoa, that makes sense, because they've been geared up to believing that for a very long time. Or some of them have been saying this already on the fucking ground, and Donald Trump was simply able to verbalize it in a way that, uh, like, Paul Ryan never would get himself to say. But, but someone as, like, uh, respectable as Paul Ryan has even uh, uh, talked about, like, election results being fake and potential voter fraud happening, because voter fraud is the only way, uh, claiming that there's voter fraud when no such voter fraud is happening, is the only way to justify election fraud, which is what Republicans legitimately do on a regular basis. In order to stop people from voting, you have to first create a problem. If there's no such problem, you just lie. And they've been doing this for many, many decades, so it's not new. The only difference is Donald Trump was saying it exactly how the way people understood it on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference, and that's why he was able to build so much momentum, and that's why he was so popular as well. He spoke like the well, people, it, it, talks there, like me. If yeah. there's footage of him being like, don't, this is what the best case scenario could be like. They're storming the Capitol, sir, we need to call in the police. He's like, don't call in the police. Just let it happen. <laughs> like, something like that, right? Do you think that would cha change people's minds? I mean, something so undeniable. But that already exists. I, yeah, that's the thing. I, I want to watch this. Uh, there's only a few seconds. Can we talk for a minute about January 6th? Yeah. That's it? That's Come it? Come on, you fucking turkey. Well, so this is like a... That looks like it was an actual trailer for the documentary itself. What they subpoenaed is the raw footage. Yeah. Bro, I want to uh, see that so bad. I wish... Please, just... 
crowdsource this shit. Release like, I, I all the raw anything, footage. I don't think anything is going to come out of it. Like, there's no way he could literally be like, "I know I am stealing this election, and I don't <laughs> care." And, I and, won't and, kill Mike Pence. What if yeah. he said, "I want yeah. them to kill Mike he Pence." He said, <laughs> "Liz Cheney came out first day and said that he literally said maybe he deserves it." Trump said. Maybe he deserves it when he heard the crowd saying uh, Mike Pence needs to be hanged. You know why? Because Trump, much like many real Americans, hates fucking fake friends. And Mike Pence is a fake friend. He's a fake phony. Fake-ass friend. It's not like none of these. People don't care about institutions. They do not care about the sanctity of institutions. And why should they? The, the government has fucked them over uh, uh, for a very long time. They only see the government as like, a, as like an authority that comes in, takes uh, you know 30% of your paycheck, and then, and then, you know, funnels it into uh, subsidies to lifeless, faceless corporations hey, or war. So, of course, people don't trust the government. Of course, people don't trust the institutions. Of course, they've, like, Congress is always historically uh, always unpopular. They hate politicians in general. So, for someone to come across like an outsider, even though they're not, they're a fucking real estate developer. Clearly, they were not an outsider, the most insider you can be. Uh, but someone who can, like, portray themselves as an outsider and say fuck these institutions gives people a lot of uh i guess hope uh it, it justifies their anger it gives them um you know it it gives them they they love trump for that reason because they think he's like destroying these institutions because no one on the ground really fucking cares about the safety and security and sanctity of the hallowed halls of congress i don't give a shit do you do you care about congress i don't give a fuck i mean no, fuck the Congress. Fuck the Supreme Court. People are like literally yeah, losing their minds the right now. Court, Chief Justice John Roberts. Oh my God. The the Supreme Court's uh you know the integrity of the Supreme Court is under threat. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? Do you know what the Federalist Society is? Like how all of your fucking lackeys are are Federalist Society activist judges. Uh, this is a this is an institution specifically designed to put the most reactionary uh, Republican justices in positions of power and also pad the deck in the lower courts so that they can undermine uh, uh, Congress with obstructionist with an obstructionist agenda, which they very successfully do, sidestep Congress and go into state legislatures where they have an overwhelming advantage as a consequence of gerrymandered districts uh, and, and write state legislation that is completely unconstitutional, have that go through the court system all the way to the Supreme Court, where the 6-3 supermajority of, uh, of reactionary justices vote in favor of not the democratic opinion of the people, not the majority of the uh, opinion of the people, not what's in the best not interest even a of the legal, people. Not a fair legal analysis. Yeah. It's literally political hackery. It's crazy. But it's always a, been a, that way, is what I'm saying. It's like, that's well, kind of what it's been. I'm a fan of Congress in theory, you know. I, there are certain things they need to get rid of, like the, the Senate filibuster. Just the Senate in general. It shouldn't Just get rid of it. the Senate. I mean, if you got rid the of the filibuster... Uh, Why should Rhode Island have the same power as California? It's completely insane. Yeah, California like, has more constituents, more voters than like ten well, states combined. The yeah, idea of it is that you know California gets more House representatives and every state gets equal. Representatives. I, don't, I have less of a problem with the House; it's proportional. That makes sense. But the Senate is insane. Well, no, the House is also broken. Well, as a consequence of redistricting as well. You're right, so you're like. Right. They're they're breaking at least apart. the principle of the house. Yeah, honestly, underlying it I makes sense. I think if they got rid of the filibuster, I'd like to see it just functioning even in like the slightest bit. But the Supreme Court right now is is like a threat to civilization. I mean, what they're doing yeah. is, is fucking absolutely insane. This is a this is a multi decade project that's uh, that's finally that's finally showing how successful it is. They're finally doing exactly what they've been, uh, what these well, you know institutions were designed to do. You know what's funny? They're always talking about uh, the democratic uh, cabal. I mean, the Federalist Society is literally a cabal. They have worked in the shadows, behind the scenes, to get through people that are a member of a cult, literally, who will, they've become judges, they've gone to law schools, and they've been groomed to be a part of this cult, the Federalist Society, and get, and they elect presidents, they, they elect senators, and they streamline these people straight into the fucking Supreme Court. You want to talk about a cabal and a conspiracy? I mean, it's right here in plain sight. 1982 is when this, uh, when this organization was founded. 1982. From they've 1982 work, till man. now, um, they've, been able to, they've been able to dramatically change They've done the, good-ass the, work. Yeah. They, 
I this was this became a major problem when George W. Bush uh, was going to appoint a Supreme Court justice that he knew, I think, like from childhood or something, right? And the Federalist Society sidestepped him and said, "No, you can't do this." And they actually put their own appointee forward. And ever since then, I mean, that was, I think, like that was the first instance where the Federalist Society basically showcased how powerful they were. And since then, they've just, every single justice, is, it has to be a Federalist Society justice. And they all have been. People are jokingly, someone jokingly said vote harder. I mean, look, if Trump didn't win, then this wouldn't have happened. So I know, but like, remember, is it, some but we, we go back to, to, if we're talking about this from like, our institutions have failed us, and it's time to recognize that perspective, which is the argument I'm making, you have to understand that like, George W. Bush did not win the popular vote, stole an election in Florida, okay? and was able to appoint Supreme Court justices. Donald Trump did not win the popular vote, won okay. through the Electoral College, and was able to appoint Supreme Court justices. Like, and these guys have lifetime appointments. That's I mean, insane. The lifetime appointment thing used to go. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, it's because... How, how, that, how, that many, how many Supreme Court justices out of the nine have Trump or Bush appointed? It's got to be... I think almost... Seven. Oh, uh, yeah, almost... Yeah. Like seven out of the nine or something? But then, so you know what like they seven do, out of the nine. No. Trump picks, like, really young people. Like, the Brett fucking Kavanaugh and these old fucks, they're going to be on this for, like, 50 years. Outside of one, all six right now are... I think it's, like, five of the... Uh, the Everybody but Clarence Thomas. Supreme Court justices are... are right. A Trump or Bush era picks. What the fuck is with Insane. lifetime appointments? How does that make? Well, the the reason the justification sense? for it is uh, that uh, you know this is a profoundly important position, and therefore it must be devoid of polit uh, of politics. <laughs> that it must not interfere. So that how does Supreme that Court justices uh, should not have like uh, should not have to like get like curry political favor uh, and and like try to get reelected into that position. You know what I mean? To avoid elections. Is, yeah. But you can appoint one every, you know, 10 years or something. Basically, they think that in that circumstance, Supreme Court justices would not be, they would be ideologically bound to whoever is in a position of power that will reappoint them. And therefore, I mean, I'm just saying in theory, it's bullshit. I don't believe it. It doesn't make it, any sense But that's the theory. The theory is yeah, that... Yeah, lifetime appointment is, is insane. Like, I can't believe the founders were so... Uh, that that That's just crazy, bro. So but that, you know I, what? It, that's where the lifetime appointments come from. Yeah, it idealistically i guess it makes sense but i mean i don't even understand it idealistically like i know the supreme court's supposed to be devoid of political leanings and um that's good and all but i don't understand how putting someone in that position for life these people have no accountability i mean they have no fucking repercussions or accountability they can theoretically be impeached but that will never fucking happen yeah like Has clarence thomas happened? clarence thomas should be impeached clarence Dude, thomas his wife, wife is Ginny a thomas like going back to the january 6 shit yeah going back to the january 6 shit like Ginny thomas 100 percent influenced clarence thomas's decision how could she not on, uh, yeah i mean she is like a psycho <laughs> she was involved Doing in the january 6 like she, insurrection dude. she she absolutely uh, petitioned trump uh, at the time, and and 100%, like, it's not an accident that uh, Clarence Thomas's decision was the single standalone decision on, uh, in, what was it? Hold on, I'll, I'll give you the exact decision real yeah, quick. Yeah, so Clarence Thomas is a Supreme Court justice appointed by Bush, is that right? Yeah, he, the he is Bush. the... Oh, Clarence wow, Thomas was the sole dissenter point. as uh, Supreme Court of the United States allows Trump's documentary, the one that we just saw, to be seen by the January 6th committee. He was the sole dissenter. <laughs> now, because there's a conflict of interest there, normally in lower court systems, there's a, ethics, uh, there's a code of conduct and an ethics violation that lower courts have to abide by. But because the Supreme Court is only nine Supreme Court justices and we treat them like fucking deities, uh, that they don't have those same actual set of standards. They just, uh, it's like a, like a handshake agreement that they will abide by lower court ethics standards. He needed to recuse himself in this circumstance because right. of a clear conflict of interest. Yeah, with so his, his wife. wife was recently exposed of, as being like a fucking fringe QAnon MAGA cultist who was working to overthrow the election. This is the Supreme Court justice's wife. I mean, this is insane. I mean, if you think that's insane, like, okay, let's talk about something else here real quick for the Supreme Court of the United States. Ruth Bader Ginsburg famously said, like, I love Antonin Scalia, right? Antonin Scalia was a disgusting, petulant freak, okay? Pig fuck. 
that died <laughs> swallowing a fucking pillow at a hunting lodge, okay? I, I don't even want to know what the fuck else he was doing out there. <laughs> Whatever godless... He's burning in hell, if there is a hell. Antonin Scalia certainly is burning in it, okay? A shame to Italians, all right? Now, <laughs> this motherfucker... This, was, this actually was like a very eye-opening moment for me when I was taking a constitutional law class in college and I was reading one of his dissents about gay marriage. Where Antonin Scalia, famously in a dissenting opinion... Uh, against uh, a gay marriage wrote uh, the, the classic slippery slope logical fallacy where he basically said, if we allow gay marriage to exist, what's next? A marriage between a man and a, uh, and a horse or a marriage between a man and a yeah, dog. That's fucking And that, man. like, he, he compared gay marriage to bestiality. So understand that, like, these people are not these incredible no. legal scholars. Uh. They're simply utilize. They're just reactionary pieces of shit that are using a relatively new um, uh, uh, constitutional interpretation that was totally made up, okay, as a, as, a way to, as a way to basically create an intellectual patina around reactionary ideology. That's, that's it. They want to code it in like some kind of intellectual uh, examination when in fact it's not. It's just you're a Republican, you're a conservative, you want to hurt gay people, you don't want them to get married, so you're just you, you're just gonna vote against it. You're just, gonna dissent just against. Just to give it. you context, this guy, Antonin Scalia, he was appointed by Reagan, and this motherfucker is ancient history. This man is a dinosaur, and that's why he's talking like these insanely homophobic takes that I guess were more commonplace back then. The man's a dinosaur, and he's still in the Supreme Court with these dinosaur ideas. He's not accountable to anyone. That's fucking insane. It's so crazy. Yeah. But what was that quote? Pull up that quote by, uh, by Ginny, Ginny, what's her name? Ginny Thomas. Yeah, so this is uh, Justice Clarence's wife. She said, help this great president stand firm, Mark. You are the leader with him who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. I mean, you're just a crazy person. Literally, literally won by like person. five, pl seven million votes or something. Awesome. That's the wife of a justice. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, there have been times when the Supreme Court has been on the right side of history when it comes to civil liberties and whatnot, and also not specifically on the, on the very wrong side of history when it comes to civil liberties back in the day. <laughs> Three-fifths. But, but ultimately... Like, uh, it, it is a, it is a incredibly undemocratic institution. It completely undermines, like, uh, the people's interests. And these Supreme Court justices, every single recent Supreme Court justice that was appointed by Donald Trump, straight up lied on the stand mm. uh, when, they were, when they were being inducted or when their appointment hearings were happening in the Senate and said that Roe v. Wade is the law of the land. It's a super precedent. And we're not law. going to overturn it. That was a fucking lie. Yeah, that's they crazy. Just they just straight up fucking lied. And there's yeah. no accountability. And then, like, the first thing they do when they open their new session is, like, let's get rid of this shit. Yeah. So for Chief Justice John Roberts to cry about, like, the uh, institution uh, being undermined, you know, the Supreme Court being undermined as an institution that is otherwise seen as infallible is a silly one, considering that this same Supreme Court has done, uh, you know, horrific, monstrous things before this supposed draft leak that really, really hurt the Supreme Court. Like, fuck the draft leak. The draft leak is meaningless. Uh, I know and fuck the Supreme Court. <laughs> I know Scalia is dead, uh, by the way. I don't know. What? I've, yeah. Yeah, he fucking died. He croaked like a little bitch. <laughs> yeah, I said, like I said, he, he died choking he on a died, pillow in a hunting lawn. He loser. Yeah, but, um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, so everything's fucked. Oh, but, so you were saying the Supreme <laughs> Court ruled that they could get this documented? That went to the Supreme Court? Yes, it was, so, the reason why I said Clarence Thomas is, like, uh, could be impeached. I think there's, like, grounds for impeachment for Clarence Thomas is because he was the sole dissenter, in, so a, the, in a Supreme Court hearing where they looked at whether or not the Trump documentary, the one that we just saw, w could be seen by the 1-6 committee. Yo, I'm kind of impressed that the other guys voted to send it through, though. I mean, because, like, it's, it's so ridiculous, dude. Come it's on. That, that would have been, like, there are certain things where it's, like, it doesn't really matter. Why does that even go to the Supreme Court? The, why does the committee need them to approve that they can fucking subpoena documents? I guess they sued them, right? To keep it secret. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were trying to block it, right? 
Yeah. Well, there you have it. They agreed with the prior ruling that the former president was unable to exert executive privilege, too, because that's why. That's it's the main reason. It's fucked up. Yeah, it's a fucked the, up precedent. Because, the yeah, it would have set a, an incredible precedent that, like, a former president would be able to exert executive privilege. Like, that's insane. So what did what did Clarence, did he write an opinion, or did he just dissent quietly? Yeah, he said, my wife's not going to fuck me if I... <laughs> it's my every wife's well, duty to sleep with their house. husband. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, what did he say? Let me see if I can find his dissenting opinion on here. But oh, it was not. He was, he didn't even publish a dissenting opinion. Yeah, no, <laughs> he's, he's just like, like hey, don't. I don't need to explain myself. Just <laughs> fuck you all. Yeah, Clarence. Oh boy. Um. All right. I'm sorry to say, but we are out of time. I'm black belt as fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. Um. We don't have time to get to this story, but Cam has such a good graphic that I feel like you guys just need to see it. Um, can you, uh... Throw it up. Ted Cruz is a fake gamer, bro. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But, uh, we'll have to talk about it next week or something. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Black Pilled as ever. Tomorrow is Friday after dark. We will be here at our regular time. And having a fun-ass good old time doing it. Hassan, thank you to you. Sweet, beautiful Hassan. Yes. Who we love so well. Yes. And thank you to all of the beautiful members here. And shout out to Alex uh, Mandel. Oh boy. Fuck boy, boo, boo, boo. I'd take you on any time, man. <laughs> Chat with <versus> Alex. No <laughs> way, brother. I encouraged you. Oh, no. Oh, boy. We're going to hear this a lot more. <laughs>